It is your Wednesday night sports delight, the platform sports talk show. And yes, I am back. It's been a few weeks, but I'm here. It is the platform sports talk show. I'm your boy Smooth. What's going on, party people? Let's get them shares going, them likes, all that good stuff. As the main show is here, and I am not alone. Right now, she's represented from the Boondocks. Everybody, leave them comments. Let's go bring it in. Joe Bo, what's happening? What is up? Happy Wednesday. Happy, oh, to see sure. Happy to see your face again on our screens. It's been a bit. Yeah, man. I feel like even though it's been like what, maybe two weeks, we feel like a whole month. I'll be off. I'll be off the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's midweek. I'm just ready for the weekend. Yes, yes, yes. And for those tuning in for the first time, thank you very much. Once again, we are your Wednesday night sports delight. This show has been going on strong consistently every Wednesday for five, not five months, five years, y'all. This is a mainstay, and it will continue to get greater and greater and greater. And thank you all for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Once again, I said at the beginning, Get them lights going. Get them shares. We want to get as many people tuned in because we have a jam-packed show, a lot of great topics to discuss, and another great guest will be on at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. So that gives y'all people, the new ones, the newbies, some time to go ahead and get ready, you know, get everything set around the house, make sure the kids are are in their rooms or whatever that they got to do, whatever. And get ready to enjoy our special guests at the top of the hour. At my Twitter o'clock. has been blowing up the last two days with all the shares and likes for our special guests later on tonight. So yeah. sounds like it's going to be a good one. Yeah, look forward to it. So once again, special guests will be joining us at eight o'clock Central Standard Time. So in the meantime, continue to enjoy this show and get ready for our special guest appearance. Before we go any further. This show is so great. We have two different entities going on here every first Wednesday of the month. And last uh, last week was an incredible show. Uh, Joe, I know that you hated not being there in person, but we had the first in-person ladies' night show. Once again, goes down every first Wednesday of the month. An incredible panel of women who knows their sports. I call it the best panel of women and sports, man, I, I love this panel here. Joe, she holds things down. Shouts out to Sharita. Shouts out to Coach Dominique Stringer. Shouts out to Miss Missouri, Michaela McGee. Shouts out to the host, Bunny. I, I mean, it's just an incredible panel of ladies, and uh, y'all did an incredible job last Wednesday uh, being in person. Shouts out to my my fam, the Gambles. Uh, they allowed the crew to set up shop and have a great show. So, Joe, uh, once again, shouts out to you and to the ladies for holding last week down. Yeah, last night was a very fun show again. Like, I I wish I could have been there with all the ladies and you guys. But, um, I mean, I was happy that I was at least, you know, able to still do it from home. But, uh, yeah, it was awesome. And the the host there, beautiful home. Yeah. That was awesome. That's That's those goals right there. Right. So, Definitely look forward to having many more in-person shows so everyone can come together and have a, a great time and talk about some sports. Then every last Wednesday of the month, you have the Man Cave hosted by Stan. Shouts out to him, uh, T-Bone Funk. Uh, he's on the show. Uh, shouts out to Sadar Ryan Turner. Shouts out to the legendary Blackest Man on Radio, Craig Black. Uh, it's uh, once again uh, an incredible, incredible show. They had an uh, incredible guest on uh, a few weeks back. Uh, Corey Frazier holds things down in the ATL right now. He's from St. Louis, but he's in a- in the ATL, holds things down as one of the coaches at Overtime Elite, one of the most premier basketball uh, programs in the country. And both of these shows have really taken off and. They own. They have their own lanes, but at the end of the day, it's just great. Excuse me, great content, great shows, and continue to grow and grow and grow. So, in between that time, you have this show, the platform sports talk show. So, 
Thank y'all once again for tuning in. We appreciate it. Shout out to those listening right now on Hot 365 Radio, where it's always hot. All you got to do, if you have Android or if you have an Apple device, just go to your Play Store, go to the Apple Store, put in Hot 365 Radio, download it. You can listen. It's clear HD. You'll love to hear our wonderful voices. And, of course, you can go online, hot365radio.com, as well as a, another option. So, uh, once again, Joe, great job. Ladies night, uh, y'all held it down. And shouts out to Bunny. She's in, I believe, New York, trying to be like Harrison Bader. <laughs> but she's in New York uh, right now. So, have a great time, Bunny, and look forward to having you back next week. And uh, with that being said, you already know what it is. Oh, I do want to say, for those watching on Twitter, if you're trying to leave comments, we are not able to see it, so you have to be logged on on Facebook or on YouTube if you want to leave comments or questions. We want you to engage with us, interact with us, bring them questions, comments, or whatever it is. doesn't matter where you're from. Yes, we are based in St. Louis. But we talk about everything. So y'all bring it to us. We got y'all. So bring them comments and let's go. With that being said, Joe Bo, hmm, you now have my attention. What sports story stories has your attention? Mine is. Uh oh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. My, mine's the New York Mets. Um, you know, beginning of the year, everyone was talking about how you know they got the ground. They made some uh, moves for Marte and Escobar and so on. But everyone always thinks that they're going to met because that's just what they do. They're good this year. I don't think they're going to met. <laughs> they're probably going to be in the NLCS. You know, I was, as a Cardinals fan, I had to say that I want the, you know, the Cardinals in the CS, but it's probably going to be the Dodgers and the Mets. Um, I mean, they got Max Scherzer and DeGrom back. They both went back-to-back games, double-digit strikeouts against the Braves at home last week. City Field was freaking pumping. And I, I asked you to play something, but the best closer in baseball, Edwin Diaz. This dude is striking out over 50% of, his, of the batters that he faces. That is absolutely insane. And whenever he comes out, everyone remembers – Mariana Rivera with the Yankees coming out to enter Sandman at Yankee right. Stadium. Like that place was pumping, you know, going crazy. Edwin Diaz has a new one. It's got uh, New York going crazy. And I don't even really like the Mets, but every time I watch this, I get excited. My daughter dances. It's it's really fun. And I think it would be awesome to see that in the playoffs. Any time on something like this. for the Mets, number 39, Edwin Diaz. The place is going crazy. You know, that was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, two-game series against the Yankees. So, obviously, Yankees are in town, and it's, you know, a little more crazy, but a midweek series, you know, and uh, that place was going nuts. Just imagine how awesome and amazing that's going to be in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. And uh, you're right. In regards to the Mets, it's just amazing how making the right choices in the offseason can impact the team during the season. The moment they got Buck Showalter, Mm -hmm. they knew that it was someone that was not about playing games. He's a, a winning manager doesn't allow any mess and he changed the culture around you have not heard one 
well, maybe beside no, was that this year that uh Lindor uh got uh got hurt doing something uh off the field? I feel like it was yeah, that was this year, but it was like like a couple days, you know, like it didn't really, it really wasn't that big of a deal, you know. Um, I think it was like in the hotel at uh in LA that that happened, yeah. but um, okay. no, I mean, everyone they're just having fun, and you know, we we talk about. Well, like you, you mentioned, like, are you watching the Derek Jeter, um, the captain? I have now. I, I want to wait till each one, uh, each episode came out that I'm going to watch it all together, like back to back to back to back to back. So, okay. So, tomorrow's the last episode, but Jeter says multiple times in that series that, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to lose a single game. He wants to win. He wants to win. And then, like, anytime they went up against someone, like in 09, Jimmy Rounds was running his mouth saying that they're going to, they're going to beat the Yankees in the series in five games, you know, to let them get one win and so they can win in front of their fans. And Derek Jeter's like, that's poster board material, you know, like that's in our clubhouse. And Spencer Strider, rookie for the Braves, said something stupid over the weekend whenever they had a five-game series at City Field saying that the Mets are getting lucky. And I don't know how you can say that when you guys are now like six and a half, seven and a half games out of the division. Right. And you, you can't let a rookie say that. You, you can talk about that in the clubhouse, but you can't be saying that interviewed, you know, on, on the television for the Mets to see that. So that's just more, you know, poster board material for the Mets. So I think they're the real deal this year. And obviously, you know, like I mentioned, the two guys, Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer, if they stay healthy, then that's, that's a it. really, really scary one, too, to face in the playoffs. And as I was saying before, just having a guy, a coach, uh, like uh, who I was referring to earlier, Buck Showalter, just change the culture around. You don't see culture around, and you don't see this little, these little crazy stories like you heard last year. You know, these little funny little whatever clown stuff going on. No, it's all business, and you can tell just about how the team is playing on the field, how they're doing small things, you know, on the field, whatever it is. Uh, the basic fundamentals of the game and how they're they're winning. So uh, definitely had to show uh, love to the Mets and definitely to uh, Edwin Diaz as you're talking about how his entrance. Like I think about now myself, like man, well if there was a corner player now, I know Gio has a cool little entrance, but it's not as epic as you know Diaz. If I'm Ryan Helsley. I got to go back to like some major league type stuff. I like, <laughs> I mean, I think Helsley has a uh, ACDC Hell's Bells like Trevor Hoffman used to have. I'm yeah. pretty positive that's what uh, he does. Um, you know, it's funny though, Buck Showalter <laughs> said last night that he uh, he had to go to the bathroom, but he held it until he could see Diaz come into <laughs> the game because he didn't <laughs> want to miss it. Like, that's hilarious. And also, SNY, the Mets broadcast. Yeah, I, lo- I love I've how they seen that. Up. I see the, the whole red screen and everything. I, yeah. yeah, they've been yeah. doing that a lot, and that's been really cool. So, um, and and, and that's what you know we've been talking about this for a while. But that's what the game needs is to just bring, be more creative to attract more people to watch your product. You know, so what Evan Diaz is doing. Even uh, I saw this Baltimore Oil closer the other night. Yes, uh, Batista. Um, the here comes Omar. Um, yeah. See- that and, is awesome. <laughs> and I love how they had the stadium lights flashing. Like if Bush Stadium, and I got you got to find this out. Like what happened to them using those lights at the stadium and now flashing like crazy? I don't know if it's a distraction down. It, it better not be. But I need to find out what's going on because they need to better utilize those lights. Because just imagine if you if you're a uh, you know uh, Ryan Helsley come out the bullpen and you got do 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 do. Dun, dun. I, you know what I'm saying? Just do something like that just to have everybody like, oh, yeah, it's on. It's a wrap. Let's go. Close the yeah. game out. You know, and then have the lights going and just, just have it go just, just different. We have to be – you got to start being behind other teams and what they do and start being more creative and have more – like, for instance, how the MLS, they already starting off before one game. They already have a local uh, rapper from St. Louis mastermind be like the uh, the, con- the, cur- the curator, you know what I'm saying, regards to bringing more, you know, energy or bringing some energy to the stadium, to the experience when you go to an MLS game. That's going to attract youngsters 
to go to games because they're going to hear coming in, they're going to hear Nelly and Chingy, and you're going to hear other, you know, artists and stuff like that, other genres. We're stadium, Cardinals, y'all got to come on and bring it so you, we can continue to attract different audiences to come to these games because that's what's going to help grow the game even more by being more creative. So bring those lights back because that's what I'm looking yeah. forward to. Bring those lights in, have some music going. I want to hear a batter come up with some, you know, with some crazy, going to have the whole crowd just singing a song while he at bat. <laughs> you yeah, know I love saying? how um, Charlie Blackman. Everyone says, you know, everyone sings his song whenever he comes up to the plate. Right. Um, you know, I mean, this is what we talked about this a couple times on the show. Is you know how could MLB grow the game a little bit, and you know something like how you know Diaz. It's just a catchy song. You know, right. I mean, obviously no one could have known that was going to happen. You know, like there's even hashtag Edwin Diaz challenge now on Twitter. You know, like right. it's. It's exciting. It's fun. And um, like I said, I don't necessarily like the Mets, but they're definitely fun to watch. And they're going to be scary down down the stretch and into the playoffs. Yeah. And even remember a couple of years ago during their uh, championship run, uh, the Nationals, I think it was Manny Parra. He had the baby shark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baby shark. So, you yeah, know, it's just, fun. just stuff like that, man, just to bring more people to, you know, to the game. So hopefully – the they, pearls last year with Jock, yeah, Peterson. Jock Peterson, right? So it's just yeah. a little small things that can just bring more people to the game and make it more must see. Uh, I mean, I know we already sell our games anyway, but you know, you still want to be able to continue to attract other people who may not be interested who always say, Oh, going to a game is boring. No, well, let's change the mindset for the Cardinals. I think who said it? Someone on the radio, I think, yesterday said it that Newt Bar is uh, working on something. So may- yeah. maybe that'll be something for the Cardinals, you know, it's yeah. protein bar or whatever, but it's still cool. And obviously, you know, Cardinal fans travel very well. Anytime you hear them, you hear it all over the place, you know, so th- that's cool as well. But um, what's got your attention, Fred? What has my attention? A couple of things. One, uh, it's the Pro-Am. Uh, this is a summer league that goes on around certain states and around the country where – select uh, professionals from the NBA, they may join in and compete. You have like the famous Drew League. You know, you have leagues in Seattle, Washington. There's even one here in St. Louis uh, that's that's trying to grow. So where more professionals from the NBA uh, will come and play a pickup game, Uh, you know, it'd be straight up four quarters and they get it in. Uh, a lot of guys like DeMar DeRozan, James Harden, other guys, they have been a part of these games and these leagues for years now. But something happened maybe about a month ago. And the king, LeBron James, actually made an appearance. And it was his first appearance at a program in over maybe eight, nine years. But he made a recent appearance about a month ago in California for the Drew League. And the place was, it's normally already pretty packed, but for his event, it was a line all outside and around the building, jam-packed. It was crazy. And maybe not too many days after he showed up and played, now uh, in the NBA has a crew that will come to the programs and actually do live broadcasts, and they'll have it on NBA.com. So now you're able to see other professional players show up and, you know, show out and have a good time with it. And it's very competitive. So it's like, it doesn't matter if you an NBA player or some guy off the street or maybe a guy who plays overseas, whatever, they come together and they get it in. And just the impact of what LeBron James did last month, now you have an NBA.com pull up to your event, uh, select events, and now they're broadcasting live on their app. And uh, an NBA player brought this out. I can't. I think it was Deontay Murray or someone like that. But he was saying that he he hopes now that more NBA players come out to these events. So, like, could you imagine, Joe, if you if you decided you and B decided, hey, let's go to a program game here in St. Louis, and Jason Tatum shows up and plays, you know. <laughs> you know, a, a Trey Young, you know, come, comes through and, and plays, or, you know, whoever your favorite player is, comes through 
and and plays that uh that brings more people to the game because a lot of people can't can't say they seen LeBron James play in the NBA game, but they could say they saw them they saw him right there uh two or three rows from LeBron or or maybe front row by the uh, by LeBron and you're able to see him play a game. That's uh, I think that's something that the NBA needs to take advantage of. Not say it needs to be in the center, of, but yeah. or you, you got to do it. But put that out there for more guys to continue to come out to these games. And I mean, the NBA doesn't need any help because they're doing great. But it's still about the fans, and uh, it just be dope to have events like that uh, and where more NBA players are are coming out. Do you think franchises would be like nervous to let? Of course, you know, uh, yeah, because of injuries and stuff like that. But then at the same time, you got guys who who get hurt, like Chris Sale when he riding the bike. So yeah. I mean, what's what's worse, playing basketball or driving a bike or riding a bike like Carlos Martinez did a couple years ago? You know, or Tatis Jr. You know, on yeah, yeah, I get you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, and then plus it keeps the guys fresh. You know, you may learn something just from being in in certain environments to help you enter the season because you, you still have to play ball during the off season to stay sharp. You know, not saying you're going to be taking a whole four months off and don't touch the basketball. No, you're going to still be touching the basketball. You're going to still be playing pickup games, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would rather have it be at a control setting like that. than just going to some, whatever park and trying to play, you know what I'm saying? Cause you have referees there, you know, it's, it's still, it, it's really some officials there that hold things down. So I think more EMA players should, you know, see about doing that. I think that'll be super dope. Uh, the second thing was um, in regards to wrestling, in which, as you see behind me, I uh, wanted to highlight this picture. This was uh, from SummerSlam a few weeks ago, and it was Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, and um, and I, and hopefully T Bone will be joining us later on. He's actually heading to the airport right now, so hopefully he'll be on to uh, talk about more of the wrestling that we have on the show but this was an awesome scene let me go out the way a little bit so uh brock lesnar had a tractor that he brought to uh the ring and during the match he lifted the, the whole ring up or in a, a corner of the ring up and roman Reigns started falling down off the ring it's a moment that you have not seen for quite some time in the wwe probably because of the previous uh COO, which is uh, which was Vince McMahon, and if you don't know, a few weeks back, uh, due to a lot of allegations, which actually aren't allegations, they're actually facts that uh, he was using money <laughs> from the WWE to pay off certain women and his side pieces and whatever. That's another story, but because of what he's been doing and because he's getting old and getting out of touch. He stepped down and retired, and now Triple H, a former wrestler, has taken the role of, of, of creator. So now he's bringing back certain wrestlers who may have left or got released a while back during that Vince McMahon time, and he's he's uh, being more creative and more innovative by having matches like this that has cool, awesome moments where you be like, man, I ain't going to never forget that moment, you know, that when I was there in person or I saw it on TV, it's the small stuff like that that Triple H is doing that. And, Joe, I'm not sure if you recall it, but, I mean, I've been saying, like, if you can get Triple H to take over for Vince McMahon, that's going to be a game changer. And just in the span of a month, a month, a lot of people have definitely been uh, tuning in more and been appreciating what uh, Triple H has brought to the table in regards to, uh, to wrestling. So I think it's definitely dope what he's doing. Well, I know – it was a little bit ago, but we used to have the WWE app, and there's always a, a way to watch old matches and stuff. And I know Brendan and my cousin, who's really into all that, they would just, you know, get into watching these fights when they were kids and all the crazy crap they used to do, <laughs> with, you know, all the different props and everything. So right. that's, I feel like, is when wrestling was at its best. So, you know, hopefully you get to see a little bit more of that and get more fans into it again. Yeah, because it definitely got to a point where the storylines were getting stupid, the characters were getting weird, and it's like... That's whenever you know, I kind of stopped, you know? I'm like, yeah. 
I know yeah. it's like a soap opera, but this is a soap opera. I can't be doing, you know uh, what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, people want to see wrestling. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what Triple H is doing. The the matches now are longer, and they're actually wrestling. It's not a lot of goofy stuff going on. No kind of stupid goofy like what's going on. You know, storylines or guys wearing you know goofy stuff. You know, it's just nice entertainment. Um, they're letting guys be more creative in regards to their own scripts or not even use the script anymore. You know, they're bringing out their own originality. So it's showing and the fans are loving it. And I know the people who's out in uh, <laughs> AEW are like, uh-oh, we had our window, but now Triple H came and uh, <sighs> it's going to be hard to try to you know top that. But it's just really good for the best and now that Triple H has officially uh taken over so that what had my attention and up next all hail queen serena so for those who didn't know yesterday serena williams announced that after the u.s open she will be retiring uh this is something joe that i've been actually and it's not a bad thing, but it's just something that I've been waiting on her to do because it looks like she just really hasn't been that same dominant person after she had her child. I mean, salute to her, salute for, uh, to her for coming back and still holding it down and winning matches. But in regards to like winning majors, uh, she really didn't get to that love like she used to. But with that being said, this woman here is one of the greatest athletes of all time. And notice how I didn't say women athletes. I said athletes of all time. You think about uh, LeBron James. You think about Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know, some may say, I don't know why, but some may say Tom Brady. But probably because of the winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that has something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and maybe a guy like, uh, you know, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, these are athletes here who has uh, transitioned the game, uh, who, who has changed the game. Uh, just look at, at her, at how fierce she was every match, every hit. Uh, is this someone that you're never going to forget? She is going to be someone that you have to consider as one of the top, maybe top three uh, greatest athletes of all time. And what's even more special is how she was able to do this. And this probably could put her to number one, actually, is everything that she had to endure as a woman playing in a sport where it's not really a team sport. You know, it's mm -hmm. just you. <laughs> and think about what she had to go through uh, to, you know, every match from her, her race, from her look, to from her attitude everything that she had to go through and she, she still rose to the top and still held things down and she had her own fashion <laughs> she she showed out she did her own thing she was a a a trendsetter she made uh playing sports in regards to for for ladies uh look cool you know you how you have now coco golf and and uh, Naomi, uh, Naomi Osaka and other youngsters who's coming into the game now who feel comfortable because of people like Serena Williams. So uh, we definitely want to honor her and give her all the flowers that I know she already has. <laughs> but just to give her even more from the platform sports talk show on a uh, amazing, amazing career that Serena Williams has has had over her lifetime. Yeah, I remember <clears throat> watching her on TV and, you know, whenever, like in middle school for me at least, you know, in the lunchroom, they always have the Got Milk posters and it's always, it was always, you know, guys like Peyton Manning and Griffey or even, you know, here, Sammy Sosa, McGuire, but Serena was always one of them as well. So, I mean, at a very young age, I knew she was a badass, you know, <laughs> and she did it for so long. So it's just awesome. And like you said, that not top women athletes but she's a top athlete of all time yeah most definitely so definitely uh shouts out to serena williams as she is ready after the u.s open she's ready to do different things now and uh much love to her so let's get right into 
some baseball. Are we now seeing the real St. Louis Cardinals? As you know, the trade deadline has came and gone. I know that on ladies' night, y'all talked about uh, the trades that happened around the league and definitely in regards to the St. Louis Cardinals. Now it's been uh, almost a week. I think tomorrow uh, was the official week of the trade deadline. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was uh, yesterday. Was the yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah. Was. yesterday was it. So uh, now that things have blown over, uh, Carl knows they have Jordan Montgomery from the Yankees. They traded Harrison Bader. We'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, we also be, uh, received uh, Jose Quintana uh, from the Pittsburgh Pirates. I know that we traded Edmundo Sosa uh, to get the uh, the pitcher that's now in AAA, uh, the JC, what's his last name? Romero. He's yeah, the one that crushes Red Bulls on his arm and his head gotcha. and all gotcha. that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, there's been some moves made, of course. Soto went to the Padres. And I know a lot of people, even myself, you know, yeah, I definitely wanted to get Soto because he would be a game changer for the offense. You're but, only human. We all wanted him. Right, you know? right. You know, you'll be a fool not to say, oh, I wish I had him. But uh, I asked for shrewd moves to be made by Mosellock, and I'm not mad at all about the outcome because he, he, he did what was best for the team. And I had to commend him for that. I know Bunny like, whoa, who is this? And where is smooth? But no, I'm a, I'm, I'm a realist. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. Hey, I could be wrong on, on, on things. That's, that's life. But And I may, you know, be hard on someone, but I also give them the credit. And Mosellock and Gersh, I heard Gersh was like one of the ones who uh, really got the, uh, the Jordan Montgomery trade to happen. So to the front office, they did – to me, an outstanding job because they did things that the Cardinals needed by yeah. bringing in pitchers. Now you can put a guy like Palante and eventually Hudson, you know, back to the bullpen or Hudson probably go back to AAA to work on his his mechanics yeah. or whatever. But the moves that have been made uh, were great. I was definitely impressed with them trading Harrison Bader. Uh, and it, it's not no hate towards him. He's, a, he's an excellent center fielder. But I always felt like, to me, um, the moment that you, that you think, okay, here we go, now he's going to be consistent, duh, 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 then something happens. And, and I said this, I believe, before the season started, or right when the season did start, Joe, that I just cannot see him, Carlson, and O'Neal being the outfield that's going to help us win a championship. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say – they were, they were going to be the three out there to win you a championship. But going into the season, you felt really good with those guys because we finally had something that looked consistent. And, you know, and I, I do, like you said, got to give Mo all the credit, front office all the credit. But I still just, man, like you, they put all their eggs in the Tyler O'Neill basket. And I still, I still just get really upset about that. But we're talking about Bader. Um, but no, like, yeah, I, I thought it was a really good outfield just, you know, to go into the season with and see, you know, what, what would happen. Um, you know, all three of them had really good years last year. Um, but I think we've mentioned that la this last week and even on Twitter, but Carlson showing what he can do in center field the last month or since Bader's been out is the reason why Bader's gone 100%. And Bader was probably going to get paid some money, you know, after this, after this year or next year. So, I mean, it's sad, you know, I, I really did love watching uh, Bader play the fire he brings to the team, the energy, but we also have this guy named Newt Bar that does the same thing. And weirdly right. enough, I do think if he was traded, it would have hurt the clubhouse more so than us losing Bader. Mm. And for those who are like, Oh, the Cardinal just traded a, 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 a gold glover. No, whatever. Yeah, the Cardinals traded Colton Wong, right? I think he won a gold glove. Didn't trade and, him, but we didn't resign him. But, yeah. but we didn't resign him. And then now, once again, Bader is gone. But Dylan Carlson, y'all, <laughs> I've been saying this from the moment that he started playing center field uh, after Bader got hurt. He makes playing center field looks look easy. He, he, he takes great routes to the ball, and he has an accurate cannon of an arm as well. He reminds me of Jim Edmonds. This guy this year 
has a high chance of winning the gold glove as well. Do not sleep on Carlson. This dude is the deal. You know, yeah, Bader was flashy. He was fast the whole nine. He, he made it look fun. He made it, you know, he may be the sexy pick about center fielders, but Dylan Carlson plays it easily and no pun intended, but smooth. He makes it look easy. And he, like I said, unlike Bader, he has that cannon of arm and it's accurate. So we are we are in good hands with Dylan Carlson. And then Newt Bar, he has a cannon in right field yeah. and, he, and he makes plays. So, and with Tyler this Newt last weekend with him. Yeah. Newt I mean, Bar made some amazing. amazing. And, and, and that's where the mental part of the game comes in, too, because now you know you're playing every game. You know, it, it's his position to lose. Uh, he doesn't have someone, you know, ain't no changing parts every other game. Like even when when Juan Yepes has come back, even though I forgot about him actually for a minute, but even when he comes back, there's still no reason to put, you know, to take out Newborn in the lineup until Newborn shows that he's kind of losing it or he needs just a day off. But other than that, every day I expect to see O'Neal, uh, Carlson, and Newborn. All yeah. three guys are fast. All three guys got arms, so it, it ain't no easy way going to the second or third base or even home. You know. Yeah, I like the makeup of this 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 outfield, and then the pitching once again. Quintana, he he's a steady guy. He's not gonna be like you know a uh, uh, Max Scherzer and whatever else, but this guy here can be consistent. Give you six, maybe seven innings. Uh, Jordan Montgomery, I know that he had maybe what five innings last game because he kind of had a, 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 a some cramps because of the heat, but they say this guy here. Is someone that is a pitcher as well. He's reliable, so hopefully he gives you six, seven innings, and that's gonna only uh, make the uh, the pitching staff that much better, and not put too much pressure on the offense to always score uh, seven to eight runs a game just to win a game. Yeah, uh, the Quintana one. I mean, he was putting up good numbers playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So you know, I mean. That's obviously he's, he's going to benefit playing with the St. Louis Cardinals in our ballpark and being a ground ball pitcher with our defense. Um, the Montgomery one, I think I said this last week, you know, it was shocking when it happened because I wasn't really expecting that because he was a four or five starter for the Yankees and the Yankees are a first place team, you know. Um, but I mean, I, I love the door to Montgomery one and you have him for next year as well. And whenever he says, you know, he's going to go out there and he'll die on the mound for you and this team, you know, that fires you up, makes you want to run through a brick wall, you know, like, like I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt on a Saturday. It's like 500 degrees in St. Louis this past weekend. Um, and he was going against his, his team that he was just traded from, you know, and it's not a bad team. It's a really good team. So, um, you know, five shutout innings with two hits, I think. I'll take that, you know, and every time. If he wants to go out there and go five shutty every time, I'll take that in a heartbeat. So I think we're going to see a lot more good from both of them. So what are your thoughts overall in regards to this team now since it's been a, a, a week and a day? I mean, they're good. It's weird, you know, like the whole Soto thing was messing with all of us too much. You know, it had us fantasizing and even Shohei's name coming out here and there had us fantasizing even more. Ooh, we can get a bat in an arm, you know? Right. Um, but always have to try to like ground myself and be like, Nolan Gorman's like 21, 22 years old. And Dylan Carlson's 23. Dylan Carlson's only three days older than Juan Soto. You know, like you, you got – MVP candidates on the corners of the field. If O'Neill could even just do anything offensively, this this lineup's really deep. And now you got someone that is been talked about very negatively, rightfully so, by a lot of sports, um, St. Louis sports media fans in St. Louis. But Paul DeYoung has come back and he looks like a brand new person. Uh, you know, we we've talked about it last year that Paul DeYoung literally admitted to the media that he gets really like bad anxiety and stressed out whenever he comes to the plate with runners in scoring position. Well, Friday night he came up and hit a two run double to take the lead against the Yankees. And he was saying that he now wants those situations. He, he wants the bet, 
you know, whenever we're we're down a run or it's a tie game late in the game. Like that's awesome. That's what you want to hear. So, you know, going back to triple A for a couple of months, it wasn't just to fix his swing, it was just to help him mentally reset because he is a good player. You know, he had a he was an all-star in 2019. He can play gold glove defense. So Paul DeYoung being in this lineup, hitting like he is right now, really, really makes this lineup a lot deeper. And it, it, it can be scary down the stretch. You know, at first I was like, just give me two, two, three weeks of good Paul DeYoung. But I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but a weekend he's he looked pretty good and everything's been an extra base hit so far. Yes, and as you see on the bottom of the screen, the hard work. And it was definitely deserving of him being criticized early in the season because we had better expectations. You know, you heard what he was doing in the offseason, da 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 Then he started off kind of doing okay. You know, he had a home run, opposite fields. Like, okay, here we go. Then all of a sudden, you know, nothing, you know. And one of the biggest issues has been – how do you perform with men in scoring position? And he has said in the past that he has anxiety when he has when he sees men in scoring position. But as you just noted, Joe, for him to now embrace, yes, put me in that moment. I want men on base. I want to bring him in. That's what we have been missing from him and from a guy that's uh, down the lineup to now the lineup has more length to it so yeah you're dealing with the top three in the order then you get to the middle then you got the last three and boom we still got to deal with a power hitter who can take it all fields that's what can make this team be from okay to elite mm-hmm. especially when he's doing it in uh in clutch that's the biggest thing you're doing it in clutch situations now he embraces it. it's not like oh i'm thinking too much now what should i do i'm trying to overanalyze I remember when Mark McGuire was saying that too many guys are like focusing on video too much and not just taking the natural approach of this see, see ball, hit ball, you know? Yeah. And that's what I really have to commend Paul DeYoung because I was one of those guys that was like, man, I'm done with him. Just trade up, you know, <laughs> whatever. Keep him in Memphis, you know? But he's the perfect example of taking the high road, not being your feelings and trying to, oh, no, just trade me then. No. He went down to find out what was going on with his swing, what can he do to better himself, and he worked his butt off, and now he's getting the rewards. And that should be a perfect uh, story, inspirational story to tell young players, no matter what sport you're playing. If you're struggling, don't just try to go to a different team or try to go here or whatever else. Work on what you need to work on until you finally, until, until it finally clicks and then see the reward that's going to come because of the hard work. So I have to commend uh, Paul DeYoung for that. And with that being said, got to talk about this guy right here. There he is. Got to talk about this guy <laughs> right here, the importance of Yadier Molina, another guy that I have to admit early in the season, which was just really so because it was like you could tell uh, the, the lockout hurt him because he didn't get that the full workout. And he was still kind of having some nagging injuries as well. But he wasn't himself all the way. But since he has came back, he's brought a whole new life for this team, especially, of course, for the pitching staff. Uh, Maybe a game that we saw this past weekend against the Yankees probably wouldn't have won if we didn't have Yachty behind the plate. But, Joe, just tell everybody, uh, just from your aspect, you being a former catcher and everything, just the importance of having Yadier back in the uh, in the lineup. It's it's huge. I mean, you know, you heard you heard the whole uh, clubhouse raving about how excited they were that he was coming back. And I will say the same thing happened with the young. The guys are so happy with Paulie D for him. You know, working on everything, coming back better and stronger. But uh, Yadi Molina, I mean, his, this is not how he wanted his last year to play out, you know, being on the IL, spending their time at Puerto Rico. And, you know, it, it wasn't how we all imagined it. But, I mean, him coming back, there's just a confidence back there for, you know, for the pitchers. It, they're the, the catcher is the captain, you know. Like, if you – if you, I don't know how to explain it because it's been so long, but, like, I – 
I have it in my head of how I want to talk about it, but like he just makes the pictures feel so comfortable. And you can go to um, Friday, Saturday night, whenever Gio was looking a little, little sketchy there in the ninth inning. And Yanni just went out there and they asked Gio what he said. And he just, you know, said, Give me your best pitch and let's effing go. You know, like he just. He really helps these guys. He really helps the the Latino pitchers, the Latino players, and not even just he just brings a good vibe, you know, like him, Yachty, and Albert in the in the clubhouse. We've been hearing for like two months now that they want Yachty back. So and you know, this really freaks me out for next year. I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves and talk about next year already, but <sighs> I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. And it's crazy you brought that up because I was talking to say with everything that you're saying and what he brings to the team next year. That's why I feel we have to go ahead and in the off season, see if we can get Contreras. I would rather have him, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? And and have him be that bridge until, you know, Yvonne Herrera, uh, you know, gets called up and he's ready to go. Cause Kisner, it looks like he's not that guy to me that can come up to a pitcher and, and say the same thing Yadi said. Kind of like an example a, was last night for me with right. Miles. Okay. Yeah, like all that. it's, it is, um, you know, it's Colorado. We talked about this in our chat, you know, the ball flies out. Your pitches don't go where you want them to go. And Miles is getting beat up there in the first inning, throw about 30 pitches and Kisner, I don't think went out to the mound once he waited for Maddox to do it. Saturday night, I can't remember what the actual scenario was and how it went, but someone got on base and then he like threw two balls and he's like, nope, I don't like this. Went out there and, you know, just had his own little meeting with Gio right there on the mound. So, yeah, it's I know his offensive numbers are not good this year. That's obviously, you know, he's batting eight. Truthfully, it doesn't even matter. Exactly. (laughs) You know, like, uh, I, I get tired, you know, uh, since obviously I'm an Astros fan. Astros Twitter gets on Martin Maldonado all the time about his offensive sets. It does not matter. Martin Maldonado knows how to navigate this pitching staff and call a good game, block pitches, you know, and it's just an energy back there. And I, I just get nervous for uh, for next year. We'll see how it goes. Let's try to enjoy the last two, hopefully two plus months we have with uh, – with Yachty, but I, I love Kisner, but I just I just don't really see it as a you know he's yeah. he's here it's to stay. Like, it's like to me, I see Kisner coming up to him to a picture like, hey, so uh, how you feel? Like, what you think? You know, what I'm saying it's up to him saying, hey, man, you got the stuff. Stop being scared. Throw pitches. I'm going to catch it. Let's get this MF out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see that in him. I could be wrong, but I just don't see that in him. I know, remember last year, I believe, or maybe two years ago, remember how he was always catching Carlos Martinez, and that's when Martinez was having his best pitching games. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, okay, maybe we got something here. Uh, But this year, I don't know. It's like kids didn't have the opportunity to take his position and be like, you know what? I'm about to prove and show everybody why we are in good hands. And he has not done that uh, with the bat. Yeah. I know recently he's gotten hot a little bit with the bat, but it, we just expected more from him now, and he just hasn't brought it. Yeah, and, you know, last year and this year, all you heard on Cardinals Twitter was give Kisner a shot, blah, blah, blah. Well, the dude had two months of shots, and he still didn't show you anything. You know, like he had a couple – they sits here and there, you know, but like even BT was talking about a one-on-one yesterday. You throw a low strike, he's not going to get the strike call for you because he's not good at framing the pitch on the bottom. Right. Then the Adi has quiet hands and he knows what he's doing back there. So I want to stay positive about this year. This year right now, Yadi is back. He's calling good games. Up until last night, we won seven straight with him back in the clubhouse. And, and last night didn't uh, last night just didn't, didn't happen. Okay, we're gonna just keep last night. We're gonna act like that didn't happen. Okay, that was a, a, a mirage. That's whatever it was. We're <laughs> gonna act like that game didn't, didn't exist. It is what it is. Forget last night. Exactly. Don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we talked about. Oh, and he he's ready now. So let's go ahead and bring him in real quick. 
he is make sure I'll, I'll let, get him a uh, time to give me the, the thumbs up that he's ready to go. So I'll wait till he gives me a thumbs up. So while he's getting set up, let's talk about this man right here. He returned back. I wish Bonnie was here. Man, he, he returned this past weekend. And I'm talking about Matt Carpenter, former Cardinal. Now he's playing with the New York Yankees. Uh, we'll start with the good. Uh, he came back this past weekend, and he showed up and uh, showed out. He reminded us of what he was back in uh, the good old days with the Cardinals. Uh, you can just definitely tell another guy in regards to hard work paying off. He struggled for the last two or three seasons with the Cardinals, lost his, um, you know, lost that umph. But then he went out to the minor leagues. He worked it out, and then he went to the Yankees, and he's been showing out, hitting over 300, uh, hitting mad home runs and home runs and uh, extra base hits and everything. And came to the Lou this past weekend and was able to get the stand ovation that he deserves, and he was very productive. Uh, what were your thoughts overall with uh, Matt Carpenter? Let's talk about the good side first. Good side, yeah. So, I mean, shoot, I got a little emotional a little Friday night because I'm a baby, but, I mean, I'm so happy for him, you know. Every, if, whoever's watched this show since I've been here, I've been a huge Matt Carpenter fan, and um, I'm just really happy for him, you know. Um, I'm, I'm happy he's not just in the majors, but he's – playing for the New York freaking Yankees and he's hitting homers at the left, the short porch, you know, in right field. And um, the Yankees fans are thriving with them in the lineup. And I'm just really freaking happy for him. And the stash is working, but uh, I'm ha- and I'm happy he got an ovation all three games, you know, at all the fans got their chance to, you know, shower him with love because last year he didn't get that opportunity because the last home game at Bush was, uh, cut short due to rain. So he didn't get that last at bat and really take it in. And I know everyone gets annoyed that the best fans in baseball, but when it comes to this type of thing, no one else does it like St. Louis. That's just a proven fact, you know, like, I mean, shoot, I went to Matt Adams first game back when he was with the Braves and the crowd went absolutely nuts. So right, right. Um, it was just awesome to see. And I'm extremely happy for him. And now the bad news. <laughs> uh, other day, of the game, uh, I think it was about this past Monday or that Tuesday. Was last night. Okay, last night he was at bat uh, in Seattle, and the ball fell off of his uh, ball, hit his foot, and now he has a frank a fractured ankle. Uh, they said today, uh, thanks to Derek uh, Gould, said that it was a clean break, which is actually a good thing. So his uh, recovery time is going to be six to eight weeks. So he's not out for the rest of the season. So that's good news. Hopefully he'll be back to, you know, him being him and uh, play for the Yankees. So uh, before we continue on, let's go ahead and bring in T-Bone. What's going on with you, bro? I'm not a happy T-Bone today. Uh-oh. What happened? What happened? Well, uh, I, I guess it's story time with T-Bone, huh? Uh, <laughs> you got You got seven minutes. Well, you can see my background here. You can see exactly where I'm at. What you know, the? I signed up for a little thing called TSA Free. I don't know if y'all heard of it. You pay this fee. You're supposed to be able to skip the lines and not have to go through all the hassle of taking stuff out your bags and belt and your shoes and all that stuff off. Well, uh, little did I know that uh, TSA Pre checks out at 8 p.m. I got to the airport at 8.02 p.m., which meant that uh, I had to sit there and go through the lines. And... Oh. For everybody, for the behind the scenes here is I sent a message at like 7.40 Eastern saying, yeah, I should be able to be on the show by the time it starts. That entire time was from 8.02 to now was me going through security. And also, they also had to run my bag back because why not? Oh, wow. Man. That 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 sucks, man. So I take it you were in Florida trying to get back to St. Louis. Yeah. Oh, oh. One other thing. <laughs> Flights delayed. Hmm? Oh no. <laughs> Lord. So uh looks like I got some extra time here. Let's see how long it takes for this battery to run up before I have to find another location. Mm. So uh while I have you on here, my mom wanted me to make sure I ask you this question. Uh this was in regards to Ronda Rousey. 
do you feel like that was uh kayfabe or was it real in regards to the whole referee incident on uh, summer slam what do you want me to say here <laughs> say the truth <laughs> we want the truth uh I, i'm pretty sure that the uh ronda rousey character was pretty upset with what happened and uh uh, took it out on the referee and Liv Morgan, and maybe we'll see a different side of Ronda Rousey when the, her suspension is over. Yeah, because I, I didn't see, I don't see her wanting to continue to be a face. You know, that's well, just her. And, you know, I, I, I seriously think if she were really upset, I don't think she'd judo throw the referee. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted you to, you know, go ahead and answer the question because she wanted to make sure that I asked you that question uh, since you are our wrestling guru and while you're at it t-bone why don't you go ahead and give a little promo for the sports talk show man oh well you know it's the platform sports talk show that's right the platform sports talk show uh available on the roku hey send us an email if you want to send us the platform sports talk show at gmail.com hit us up on instagram twitter 314 sports talk facebook the platform sports talk show and right here as most of you all are probably watching right here on youtube platform sports talk show make sure that you go ahead and like and subscribe and hey when you hit that bell what happens joe anytime we go live you will be notified and you know for a lot of y'all out there maybe y'all can't watch us right now right now that is but maybe you know you can listen to us on hot 365 and uh that hot 365 is always hot so uh check us out on that hot 365 radio.com you'll get the platform sports talk show hey the first monday first wednesday of the of the month you'll go ahead and get ladies night joe's a part of ladies night y'all like joe check it out and at the end of the month that's right it's the man cave the last wednesday of the month last wednesday of the month you know you get that panel You'll see people like Sadal, Craig Black, myself, Stanton. So, you know, check us out. You know, we're here to provide entertainment for you all every month, every Wednesday. You got the platform sports talk show out here. So, uh, and by the way, if you are listening on uh, Hot 365 and it becomes 9 p.m. Central, go ahead and switch on over to YouTube because uh, I hear that the, we go off the air at that time. And by the way, uh, for those of y'all who want to watch us on delay, maybe you're hearing us right now and you want to check us out, check us out on Roku because it will be posted after uh, the show goes off the air. So check us out. We're available anywhere you are and anywhere you want to be. Check us out. Like, subscribe, follow, do all that good stuff for us. Bam. In that order. T-Bone holding these down from what the up, airport. Bro. Tell her tell her I said, oh, watch where she going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured the unique background would uh, work out here. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is do, do the time. We're going to hold off on our role play until uh, next week. And, Joe, I know you got to go ahead and go. So thank you for your time, and you have a, a great rest of your evening. You too, uh, T-Bone. You're Mr. Logan Paul next week, so get ready because I got some hot <laughs> questions for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone have a good night enjoy the special guest all right all right so before we bring on our special guest he doesn't know this but i have someone else who's going to join the show she is part of the ladies night panel as well t-bone like huh <laughs> but i think she may know uh excuse me i think he may know this person very well. Everyone say what's special happening. introduction. Everyone say what's happening to Coach Stringer. What's going on, Coach? What's going on? How you doing, T Bone? Hey, how are you? I'm cool. I'm cool. That's the first time y'all have met uh, uh, online, hasn't it? I mean, doing the show, hasn't it? It is. We we we're waiting for that super show to happen where we all right. you know mix and match. Stay tuned in December. Stay tuned. <laughs> it's coming. Be ready for it. Uh, Coach, I know that you were in the ATL recently. How was it going back home? Uh, it was it was great. Uh, the first part of my trip was business. I was able to meet with my mentor and get some in-time scoop of what I got going on these next couple of months. So um, that was great. And, you know, seeing my family for a couple of weeks. I mean, a couple of days was great, too. I had to really get my mind back focused so my schedule can be crazy. So I really wanted to balance my new schedule and, and prepare for these new changes. That's what's up. That's what's up. And I saw you took some photos with Corey Frazier. You're out there in overtime elite. Yeah. So seeing some of the NBA uh, players out there, how did it feel seeing that experience? 
man, it was dope. It's, it's a little spark of me, man. Like I said, Corey Fraser been my mentor for the past two years, and for him to embrace me and put me on game was was incredible. Um, meeting some NBA players and some some prospects that's getting ready to go to NBA was really important for me because it makes me want to elevate. So um, it was it was great. It was a great trip. That's that's dope. Glad that you was able to uh, you know go back home and do your thing. Uh, real quick. I brought up earlier, I'm not sure if you heard me or not, but one of the things I brought about I brought up earlier was in regards to the programs. Uh programs are summer leagues that, that goes on in certain states where uh, overseas players, professional players, or NBA players may show up and show out. And looks like it's it's trying to, you know, get some saint some steam, some traction here in St. Louis. Uh what are your thoughts on programs? I like it. It's competitive fun. Um, I was actually going to coach yesterday at the Pro-Am girls game, but it wasn't sanctioned, so we didn't get a chance to showcase the girls. But seeing, you know, the, the guys compete and not be able to fight and just compete and have fun, it's always a positive outcome when it's just love and basketball. So I think uh, the more exposure for that is great for the community or even for these NBA players to duck in and show support to the to local communities. You know, most people can't go to the NBA games or the mini games, so they're able to go and watch, you know, them play – what locals are, you know, people who don't go to leave. So I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So hopefully we can go ahead and get on that same level or close to it, like what they're doing in L.A. and in Seattle and in New York and other states. So let's go to St. Louis. But with that being said, it is that time, people. The moment you all have been waiting for, for those watching for the first time, this is the Platform Sports Talk Show. And it's time to introduce our special guest, this man here, hometown is from the Lou, and he is proud. He went to Hazelwood Central. He says, arguably top five ever, Hazelwood Central, all state, etc. So he says he is that deal. He went to uh, a few colleges and played some ball. So we'll talk about that very soon. This man is very educated, has a master's in sports management, pursuing his his uh, ED in uh, higher education leadership. He has been the coach now at Missouri Baptist for holding down for the ladies as their head coach. Now going to his fifth season, this man has changed the game there. The team was like back in 10th place. Now I got, got the third place in the conference, setting up kind of program records, just making a difference, making an impact. Talk about that and more. He is not just a coach, but he is a father. He is a husband. And now he is the special guest of the Platform Sports Talk Show. Everybody, bring in them comments. Bring in them likes. T-Bone, come on back to the screen. There we go. You're at the airport in Orlando. Let's go with the comments, everybody. Just go with the shares as you bring on Coach Sam Pearson. Coach, what's going on with you? What up, what up, what up, what up? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I'm good, man. How All right, doing? man. All right. Hey, hey, Smooth, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with y'all here this evening. T-Bone, Coach Stream, appreciate y'all. Uh, appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity, man. It's uh, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. I'm humbled. I'm honored. Uh, man, I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I'm ready to talk, talk St. Louis, ready to talk sports, ready to talk ball. Ready to give y'all my journey, man. You know what I mean? And just connect with y'all here this evening. So, man, I'm honored by the opportunity. Honored to talk here with uh with the platform, man. You know, uh, uh, Smooth, I appreciate the opportunity, boss. Uh, man, and actually, this is the first uh, St. Louis media outlet that has reached out to me. You know what really? I mean? To, to, to connect, man. So, man, it's, this one's special, man. This one's special. So, I'm going to make sure... You know what I mean? That I give y'all me. You know what I mean? That I'm 100 with y'all, man. And that we, uh, you know what I mean? That we have a good night, man. So let's go ahead and rock and roll. Man, I definitely appreciate the love, man. It's an honor that you are on the show. And thank you for responding back when I did to get you booked for the show. Uh, definitely look forward to hearing your story being told. Uh, before we begin, in regards to your background and your life, tell us a little bit about your relationship with you and uh, Coach Stringer. Y'all yeah. may know each other. <laughs> Oh man, Coach String, let me tell you, she's a man. She's a pioneer, man. She's a pioneer for the women's game. She's a pioneer for youth basketball uh, here in the here in the St. Louis area by way of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you know, and, and, and it's kind of unofficial, or the cat may be out the bag a little bit that we plan to 
uh, plan to, to add her to the coaching staff here by the end of this week, man. So she's going to be uh, the next assistant women's basketball coach at Missouri Baptist, man. So, so hats off to Coach String for that. Uh, but man, she's a she man, she's a um, she's a trailblazer. You know what I mean? And I think that you know her connection that she has to the youth uh, and running actions, no mercy, uh, and running the St. Louis Cobras. Um, and helping um, uh, high school juniors and seniors, you know what I mean, get to the next level and get to the collegiate level. You know, I thought, you know, uh, selfishly, I needed her on my staff, man. You know what I mean? I needed I needed to rock with her. I needed her expertise, her the connection that she has to um, to student athletes, man. I needed it on my staff, man. So String is a uh, – man, she's going to be one heck of a – uh, one heck of a coach for us, man, and she's going to challenge me. You know what I mean? She's going to push me to be a better individual, to be a better coach, to be a better leader, and vice versa. You know what I mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring out the best in her, you know what I mean, as an individual, as a coach, uh, you know, as a leader, you know, and, and, and as a mentor, you know. So, man, we're excited for it, man. Coach String, shout out Coach String, man. That's my girl. Uh, Don't have me tear up on here, man. What'd, what'd you say, Strange? Don't have me tear up on here. <laughs> Come on now. Don't have me tear up. You know I get emotional. <laughs> but no, man, we're ready to rock and roll with it. We're ready to rock and roll with Coach Stringer, man. Uh, so shout out my co- shout out my whole coaching staff, honestly, man, at Missouri Baptist, man. They hold me down, man. You know, Coach Stringer, Coach Tyree Thomas, man, is, is a St. Louis cat or, or, or by way of St. Charles, man, has been, been great for us here uh, the last two years. And then also we got a couple of former – uh, former student athletes at MOBAP who are now graduate assistants and Rose Wasif and Caroline Rogers, man. So shout out my staff, man. You know, I think that as a head coach, man, you need your assistants to be in areas uh, that you're not, you know, that you that 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 doesn't fit your expertise. You know what I mean? So string in her, uh, you know, in her commitment to the youth, you know, and the others in their organization, et cetera, man, we got a well-rounded group, man, and they really hold me down, man. So shout out my coaching staff, man. Man, I love it. So, Coach, this is your opportunity now to go ahead and uh, say say your piece now that he got you in tears over there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dude, that's- he got away with words. I- I've always noticed that he had that way with words. I actually – um. I told him I wanted to play college basketball for another year. I was serious at the time. Like, you know what? I want to play another year of basketball. He's like, come on, come on. Uh, but he he spoke about, you know, joining the coaching staff. I, I really couldn't turn it down. You know, I talked to a lot of coaches that want me to come aboard and want me to, you know, help recruitment and stuff. But it's never been a genuine connection that I've had with, you know, those coaches that reached out. And Coach P was very honest and very blunt and upfront with everything. You know, he didn't hold back his expectations or what he would want for me or what I can do for him or what he can do for me. So um, he's been an honest person and that's really hard to find and very rare. So I appreciate yeah. P for giving me the opportunity to even, you know, experience being on coaching staff. I never thought that I would be, you know, on the staff. I wanted to coach college basketball, but I think that all doors being open are for a reason. So most people in the gym, man, everybody at MoBab has been welcoming. Um, like you said, his coaching staff have been welcoming. Everybody showed love. So I'm very honored that Coach P will want me on his coaching staff. So yeah. more for me than what he's talking about. He's done a lot for my internal uh, heartbeat. So I appreciate yeah. him letting you know. That's love, yeah. man. That's love. And, you know, now I think about it, Coach uh, St- uh, Stringer. This last year or so has really been pretty amazing for you. You know, having the Action on Mercy uh, Scholarship Athlete Award thing that we did a few months back. You uh, now being at MD. You know, graduating from college and now this opportunity here uh, to join Coach Pearson's staff at Missouri Baptist College. I mean, shoot, God is work is showing out, ain't he? Yeah, and you've been there to cover everything. So look, we we locked in more than you know. <laughs> uh, got a comment already. Shouts out to Cherie Stokes at Coach Stringer. That's my mama. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yes. What's up, mama? So once again, bring them comments. Let's go. The more comments, the better. We can get some nice little stories, anecdotes, whatever it is. We want it right now on the platform sports talk show. Uh, Coach, talk about your dope little background behind you, man. I'm liking it. Oh, man, right on. Right on, right on, man. Hey, hey, shout out to my wife, first of all, man. Shout out to my wife, man. She hold me down, man, on and off the court. She hold the house down, man. She... She a 100 individual, man. She a former college basketball her, uh, player herself, man. So she understands the grind, man. And, you know, she understands, you know, uh, you know, just how to balance me out, you know, especially in season. But, man, so, yeah, this the, is the wall of black excellence, man. You know what I mean? You see me kind of in the top. I'm going to try to try to point where, you know, uh-huh. you see me. Obviously, Mike, the GOAT. 
Uh, the Bean Kobe is the only one in, in color, man, in the, on the entire wall, man. And that's by design, man. Rest in peace, the Bean. Uh, you got Ali, Ty Wright, Pac, uh, Tiger, obviously Morton in this classic, Fresh Prince. It go on down the line, man. We got J&B. We got Love and Basketball, J. Cole, Lauren Hill, Erica Badu, man. It's the wall of black excellence, man. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to just uh, individuals in their own lane, man. You know what I mean? In their own lane, whatever that lane may be. You know what I mean? Whatever that avenue is. You know, whether you're a writer, whether you're a producer, you know, whether you're a basketball coach, you know, a basketball player. You know what I mean? Be the best that you can be in that lane, man. So, shout out black excellence, man. But, yeah, that's the wall, man. That's the wall. And I, you know, I had to put myself up there, too, man. I, I, I didn't. Hey, I, hey, hey, my career kind of underachieved, but <laughs> hey, I, I'm right next to Dean if you ain't see. So, so were you considering taking down the photo of Will Smith after the slap? Well, <laughs> hey, listen, man, that's that, hey, listen, Will got a lot going on mentally, man. <laughs> Will got a lot going on, man. I, I, I'll say that, smooth. You know what I mean? With, with, with everything going on with Jada, you know what I mean? On the red table, on the round table, you know, coming out publicly about all they business, man, that's a lot. It you know, and for for another brother to go up there and, and 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 smack uh smack his counterpart, you know, on national TV, man, he he got a he's got a lot going on, man. So hey, I still rock with Will. You know, I respect him. Uh, it's no love lost for me, but I tell you what, he need you know he just needs somebody on his side, man, because I, I feel like the brother's going through a lot. You know, right. and look, that's that's a that's a that's a claw machine moment. You know, like those those machines where you have the, the iPad gimmicks in there and, you know, you get the thing and you try to, to grab the little iPad or money or whatever out, you know, yep. it's okay. It's okay. If it, if it doesn't once, you don't want it doing it all the time. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, every 100%. now and then, every now and then it's going to go off, but you don't want it going off every day. Then if it goes off every day, you got a problem. But I, I, I did want to comment on that background too. Cause I, I was looking at that. I was like, man, I, I need to step my game up. I'm looking out like I'm at Home Alone 2 lost in New York over here. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Oh, yeah. Yep. T Bone, uh, your thoughts about my uh my backdrop. Hey, look, I, I thought that, that was a pretty good moment there. I mean, you know, stunts happen, but you know, out of all the stunts that you've seen recently, that was that one was up there with all the stuff that's happened. So yeah, you know, it it, it it was dangerous because anything could have happened there. Because I've seen a, I've seen a wrestling ring constructed before. That ain't safe. That was mm. not safe at all. So, mm. but yeah, uh, yeah. that Good was stuff. definitely a, a, a moment. And I said this earlier while you was uh, still getting connected, but this is one of the mo moments that you have not seen in the in the WWE in years. So I'm glad yeah. that you know Triple H has brought that type of style back. Like you've seen the ring, it, you know, explode where it goes downward. Right. But for that thing to go up, anything could have happened with that. Like that was really one of their anything can happen. I don't care how much they gimmick that ring up; those posts weigh a lot. Yeah. But I think yeah. that that was a training ring that they used. So uh, that that may have been the secret to that sauce. Yeah, but it was definitely creative, and I hope to keep on going. And, and coach, I see you have a. Is it JC Stringer? Yeah, that's my little bro right there. What's up, bro? There you go. So Coach got the whole fam locked in. Right, right. So so now we, we need to get your people's locked in. Coach, uh, Pearson. Man, I know it. Hey, I, I, saw know him, it. I saw him promoting the show. He promoted it on Twitter. Yes, he did. Very, very great job. So we want to see all them followers tune in. If you want to leave comments, once again, you have to be on Facebook or on YouTube so we can see your comments and y'all can interact with the coach and with us throughout the whole show. Coach, the first question we love to ask on the platform sports talk show is when will you say you fell in love with sports? Oh, that's heavy. Uh, when did that's I fall we do. in love with sports? Uh, man, it's at a young age. Um, at a young age, as a youth athlete, man, I always, I strive to be the best, you know, whatever we're doing, whether we're out front racing, playing tag, playing hide and go seek, playing basketball, football, baseball, soccer, whatever it is, I want to be the best at it. And I think that that love and that drive to compete and to be better than my counterparts is where I fell in love with it. You know, you got to fall in love with the process, obviously, to have the product. Um, you know, and I've and I like sweating. You know what I mean? I like in the, in the, you know what I mean? I like playing at uh, the old Vashon. 
Hey. With the lights, with the lights dim. You know what I mean? With the with with no AC in it. You know, yes, just grimy. Everybody's sweating, but that's the grind right there. You know the what pit. I mean? And that's what I love about it. You know, I love the grind. I love the uh, process. You know, from a very young age, man. You know, I think that I've always had a, a a heck of a work ethic. You know, I was I was an outstanding youth athlete. Um, you know, but but just to live in the moment, be two feet in the moment. I think that that's ultimately where I fell in love with it, man. You know, it's just, um, you know, my father pushed me at a young age, um, you know, strictly in basketball, man. I was, I was a one sport athlete throughout my entire youth. You know, I was a one sport athlete, excelled mm -hmm. on the court though. You know, he was top 10 in the nation, you know, shout out the St. Louis Panthers, Rolandis Woodland, uh, Marvin McNutt, AJ Stewart, Drake Gilmore, a couple of guys, you know, just to name them, man. But we were elite, man. We were elite youth group. Um, you know, man, but we were tough, you know, we were tough minded. We worked hard. We pushed each other. Uh, so man, ultimately that's why I fell in love with the game, man. You know, I fell in love with the process. I fell in love with the blood, sweat and tears. You know what I mean? After the game when, you know, you've had a heck of a game, but there's still mistakes to be made. You know, it's like ultimately never reaching the end. You know what I mean? You can always get better. Even in, in your successes, you can get better. You know, you win and you learn. But even in your wins, man, you can always get better. So that's kind of where I that's kind of where I fell in love with it, man, at a very young age. Um, and now on to today, man, you know, as uh, my wife jokes, man, that I love uh, I love ball the most in this world, man. You know, so man, I love it, man. You know, I love the grind, uh, the grind of coaching, uh, the grind of recruiting, the grind of balancing your budget, you know, the grind of hiring some of the best assistant coaches around. You know what I mean? Finding the best players, running the best O, guarding the best D. You know what I mean? Your baseline out of bounds, your sideline out of bounds, you know, et cetera. Man, I love the grind, man. I love ball, you know, and, and ultimately. So, man, I'm going to say this, man. Ball is the truest relationship that you'll ever be in. Mm. Okay? And I tell my players this. Ball is the truest relationship you'll ever be in. You know, you get out of it 100% what you put into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ball knows how much you love it, how much you think about it, how much you work on it, how well you eat, how well you sleep, how much film you watch. And it's going to give you that back in return. However, ball knows or ball will show you if you have fasting, if you if you're thinking about another sport, you know, I'm a two sport athlete. I don't really want to play ball. You know, if you ain't eating right, if you're staying up till 3 a.m. kicking it whatever ball will show you that too ball the truest relationship you ever be in man and for that you gotta love it man you gotta love it uh t-bone you have a question i do i since uh, since i don't know how much time i have with this battery life i figured i'd get this question in now since since you're talking about the grind and you're talking about the sweat and the tears i know that every athlete you know loves their sport but every athlete has had that one practice i'm sure I know I've been one of them that makes you think, do, do I need to do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that, what does that look like in your sports? Like, you know, cause for me, I've only done, you know, as far as sports, I wrestled in, uh, yeah. in high school. So it's, it's I, I like for people to be able to see kind of like what the different athletes do in their sports and make them realize like, man, they do a lot more than the stuff that we see is easy on the yeah. court and everything. Man, I'm gonna tell you, man. It's it, it, it. There's not much on the court that's easy, man. You know what I mean? Uh, basketball is 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 a global sport. Uh, with with athletes continue to evolve, uh, bigger, stronger, faster, more athletic, more skilled. You know, et cetera, man. But you know, to 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 kind of to kind of piggyback on what you said, man. So my freshman year of college. All right, so I went from I went from Hazelwood Central to University of Tennessee Martin, straight out of college. You know, we're in our two weeks of hell week. And my roommate, man, the guy at the time, man, name is Joe Bailey. You know, and Joe Bailey says he's, he's a shooter on the team. And Joe says, hey, man, uh, playing Division One basketball is going to make you question every single day. Is this really for me or not? And, man, every day, you know, every day, just, just you know, you're waking up at 6 a.m. for training. You know what I mean? And then it's individual practice. And then you go to class and then you, you know, got a got a weightlifting session. You know what I mean? And then you got film session and then you go 
uh, you know, and then and, and then we have study halls and then we got a team practice and then it's, you know, it's 6 to 10 p.m. And then you wash, rinse and repeat and you do that, you know, six days a week. You know, like, man, it, it makes you it makes you question. Is this really for me? You know, but uh, I think that that is the kind of gray area of ball that is teaching you life lessons and teaching you a drive and a determination and a grit that you're not seeing initially. You know what I mean? It's teaching you how to persevere when, man, I'm tired as hell mentally, physically. I'm exhausted. I can't go no more. My body's beat up. You know, I want to go back home. I'm six hours away from home, but I'm still finna get up and put in another 14 hours of everything I got. You know what I mean? And, and, and so I say, so I say to my team now, you know, how I kind of relate it to my team now is to be the best you, you know, be the very best individual you can be in this time right now. You know, if we're seven, six days, seven days into uh, 12 hour days, you know, then your body's only at about 30 percent. Well, give me the best 30 percent you got. That's all you can give me, you know. And I think that that ultimately uh, uh, builds a hard working culture, builds a culture of accountability, you know, and just teaches us life lessons of grit of determination, of persevere, of perseverance, uh, and of positivity. You know what I mean? It's easy to be negative. You know what I mean, especially in this world, man, world is, is full of negativity, man. It's full of hindrances, man. It's full of illnesses now. You know what I mean? Negativity is inevitable, but how you deal with it is up to you. You know what I mean? And we try, we choose to deal with it, you know, in a positive manner, you know, but man, it's a uh, college basketball, man. It is not for everyone. You know what I mean? You got to really love it. You know, I think that's all college sports. You got to really love it. You know, and, and the very best ones don't only love the successes of the games and their stats, but they love the day-to-day grit and grind. You know, they love to get treatment. They love to get ice. They love to get stem. You know, they love to interact in a locker room. You know what I mean? They love to individually work out as well as the team workout, as well as the study hall. You know what I mean? It's like you got to love it to really excel in collegiate sports, man. But it's not for everybody, man. It's not for everybody. Um, and it and only the best ones, uh, only the elite excel in it. You know, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, uh, T-Bone, man. Uh, so UT Martin, man, I one of my teammates, Lester Hudson. All right. Lester Hudson. Um Ended up getting drafted by the Celtics. He was the second leading scorer in the country behind Steph Curry. All right. And so my freshman year, uh, I ended up leaving UT more and I went back JUCO, but two years in a row. So his junior, his senior year, he was second leading scorer in the country behind Steph. And he was different, man. You know, he was a pro in everything he did, how he lifted, uh, what he ate. You know, we go out to we go out to eat and he'd get a salad with, you know, some some protein on it. You know what I mean? We go out, we go out kicking it and he'd have a cranberry on ice just to look like he drinking, but he ain't drinking. You know what <laughs> I mean? He was different. He was different in his approach and he loved it. Uh-huh. You know, he's still over in China right now making six figures, you know. So uh-huh. only the elite uh really prosper, man. Everybody else, man, it's a struggle. But collegiate athletics, man, is not for the week, man. You know, what I mean, it'll, it'll it'll wear you down, man. It'll wear you down and make you question yourself, make you question your drive, you know, make you question, you know, if it's really for you, man. But ultimately, you make it through. You're a stronger individual, man, than 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 the majority, man. And truthfully, I mean, that's what college is all about is that development from being a boy to a man or from a girl to a woman. You know, 100%. That, that transition on how you're going to handle life. Same thing with band too. I, I, you know, I got to throw band in there because everybody forget about the band. Everybody, yeah. everybody talk about the athletes. I know it's a sports show, but uh, <laughs> you know, if it, 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 I, I always say, you know, the reason I brought up that question is because it's like, you know, every every sport's different. You know, everybody thinks that their sport is the toughest, right? So, but that's usually because, well, if they did that sport, they did that training, they know what it feels like. But rather, it's from wrestling to basketball to uh, football and uh, I'll, again for me because of personal experience I'll throw band in there because I think a lot of people underestimate how how much every everybody out there doing stuff to contribute you know winds up uh, going through so I, I, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for uh, all, all college uh, athletes and uh, 
uh, extracurriculars. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And Coach Stranger, you had a question. I do. So, with you being um, a player and a coach, seeing that you went through, you know, the training at a young age, the practices, the different levels, and you being so passionate and loving the game as well. Do you ever feel like you come across players who might have the same potential that you saw in yourself and they don't fully execute the plan that they might have and become frustrated? And if you do get frustrated, how do you deal with it as a coach? Oh, man, that's a lot of string. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be 100. Um, where we're at right now and on, on the current level, um, I rarely see athletes who loved it as much as I did. Mm. Um, but there's those who are really passionate about the game. There's those who love parts of the game, but there's few who are 100% dedicated to it. Okay. Now, I don't know. Uh, I, I, and I don't know what that may be. You know, but that's just kind of my current in my current circumstances. And, and, you know, just for, you know, just to kind of put it out there, I've only been the head coach at Missouri Baptist, you know, so I can only I can only go off of what I know and what I've experienced. OK, now. Um, I've seen athletes uh, not fulfill their potential. Um how do I deal with it? I just continue to try to relate to them, you know, in women's basketball, it's uh, there's different ways into relating to them. You know what I mean? Some of them come, you know, from those authoritative parents where I can really knuckle up and really give them an ultimatum that this is what we're going to do. And you better get with it or get lost. Whereas others, you got to really pat them on the back, you know what I mean? And really build that relationship to ultimately get them on the same page as the group for that same collective goal, you know what I mean? Or to reach their own uh, uh, potential, you know? Um, why I uh, uh, why I think that's, that student athletes may fall short of that um, is commitment. Um, is what they do when they're not, in our uh in our view in our grasp you know what i mean what they do outside of when everyone's watching and that's big you know what i mean the, the the test to a man's character is what he does when no one's looking right you know and i think that you know you again ball, ball's the truest relationship man i might say this three four times before the end of the night but you know, uh, when I'm on the court and I'm and I'm locked in, you know, string, you know me, I'm I'm hands on. I'm locked in in our in our in our workouts. I'm locked in in the in our weightlifting. I'm locked in and I'm on the court instructing whatever it may be. You know, I don't doubt uh, many of my players' commitment. Then I know they're locked in with me because that's the standard. That's the culture that we have. But whenever we leave the court. Or whenever they get back to the dorms or whenever they get back to, you know, what I mean, to their houses, you know, what I mean, a lot of them live off campus. You know, I think that that is where uh, some of the commitment may lack, you know, and ball is a full time job. You know what I mean? Basketball is uh, there's no off season. You know what I mean? It's the longest season. It goes from it goes from uh, the end of August to the end of March, if you're lucky. You know what I mean? But after that. April through July is still commitment. You know, it's still dedication. It's still eating right. It's still sleeping right. It's still, you know what I mean? Uh, staying locked in with your teammates, working on your own individual game. You know what I mean? So there's no such thing as it, man. So you just got to really love it. Um, you know, so um, I guess what I struggle with is kind of the day to day. Uh, you know, sometimes it fluctuates, you know, sometimes we're really having a good day. Everybody's locked in. There's a lot of positive energy. There's a lot of hand slapping and fist pumping, you know what I mean? We're a unit. Whereas other days it's kind of like pulling teeth, you know, like we're having an off day for whatever reason, you know what I mean? And I think that that's kind of women's basketballs uh, on our level. You know, I think that, you know, to answer your question, string, um, it's a commitment level. Uh, it's a love for it. And it's a dedication. You know what I mean? You can't half ass ball and expect 100 percent results. You know what I mean? You got to you got to be locked into it. You know what I mean, you got to give it everything you got. And uh, you were saying how 
now you don't see the hunger as much as how you had it when you were younger. Do you feel that it's because this new generation is more spoiled? Oh man, I, I in a way I do, you know, but I think that that is uh, that society in its entirety. I think that that is, uh, you know, that's a, a new athlete, you know, uh, 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 being spoiled. Yes. But I don't like to look at it. You know, I, I try to I try to be optimistic in my mindset. I try to be positive in it. You know what I mean, this is the this is the hand we're dealt. What are we going to do with it? You know what I mean, this is the student athlete that we're dealt. How are we going to rock with it? You know, um, I think that. Uh, I think that the home life is maybe a little softer. There's less discipline. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, it, it ain't no more big mamas. You know what I mean? Who, who, right, who, right, who pick right. up that house you and smack, the, you know what I mean? And, and get right. you one. You know what I mean? It ain't, you know, so I think that that's kind of softer in its nature. Um, You know, I think that there, you know, everything's recorded now. Everything's just through a lens. You know what I mean? You 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 grab you grab your kid up in in uh, in, in the grocery store and now you're abusive parent you know so I I, I think that society in in its entirety is kind of off or or a little uh, different than what has been in the past and yes for that reason um, student athletes or you know uh, uh, um, you know are, are a little more egotistical or or maybe but um, you know ultimately uh, ball is ball at the end of the day. You know what I mean? There's five on a the court at a time. You play offense, you play defense. You rebound the basketball, you pass the basketball, you shoot it, you try to score points. That's at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So I try to look at it as foundational state. And regardless of whatever background you come from, you know what I mean? The richest of the rich or or the projects of St. Louis. You know what I mean? When we step on this court, this is the brand we're going to play. This is the standard that we got. This is the culture of who we are as Missouri Baptist women's basketball. Mm. And this is how we get ready to handle our business. You know what I mean? Now, all outside of that, I'm big on BU. You know what I mean? I want y'all to be the very best individual y'all can be. You know what I mean? Coach String, man, when she step on the court, this is how we're going to rock our business. This is what we're going to do. You know what I mean? This is what we're going to This is who we are and how we're going to lead our student athletes. But all after that, I want you to take Actions No Mercy to the top. You know what I mean? And I want you to take your St. Louis Cobras program as high as you possibly can take it. You know what I mean? I'm going to support that. You know, and I just kind of keep that same approach, you know, with our student athletes as well. Um, you know, but man, I see in the comments, man, uh, Pearson Photo Booth Company uh, commented, man. So, so shout out our uh, our photo booth company, man. We got a photo booth. Uh, we got a 360. Okay. We got a tra traditional steel shots, man. My wife and I have been rocking it for about six years now. Oh wow, uh, man, doing doing proms for 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 Rittner. Uh, we also did Roosevelt proms. Uh, uh, man, we 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 do uh, we do weddings, man. We do graduation parties, birthday parties, you know, etc. Man, so so go ahead and book us, man. That that be live, man. Support black businesses. That's smooth, what's up. smooth. Did you know about this? I I did not know. So I, I I'm I'm glad we know now because uh, <laughs> you, you know ideas. I, I got no, I got yeah, that, oh, I that's right. That's right. Well, well, I try to I try to keep man. I try to keep uh, my work and, and and my my personal life. You know, two different things. You know what I mean. Well, so, stream. That's why you ain't know, and a lot of folks around Mobap don't know. But, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's it, I mean, it's a way to get. You know, it's a way to get. You know, you got to get to the money. You know, ultimately. Well, I mean, multiple streams income. Yeah, that's right. that's right. That's that, right. That was something I was about to ask because you know we talked about you know student athletes having a lot of different interests, and one of those interests that a lot of athletes have. It, early ages is making money. And yeah. uh, I know that there's been something over the past year or so that's uh, increased their chances of do, doing that while in college. Yeah. So uh was going to ask, I know that we always talk about this with everybody on here. So uh, what's your thoughts on the NIL? Uh, man, I think that it was inevitable. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it's been a long time coming. Um, now I think that there needs to be more regulations, man. I, I want to say Thank that. You. I, man, I want to say that I've seen something something along the lines of there's going to be fifty five million dollars spent this year in NIL deals, something of that sort, you know. So I think that that is excessive. Obviously, you know, there's women's basketball uh, uh, student athletes on a on a top level, you know, what I mean, power five level, who are going to make more as collegiate athletes than they will in the WNBA. Mm. I think that that is a problem. You there know, it is. Um, now, me being ignorant in it, I'm not sure how to navigate that or how to monitor that or what regulations to put in place. Um, do I think that 
college student athletes should be paid? I do. On big time levels. Um, man, I've seen it. I've seen a, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, man. It's a, it's, I think it's the Arian Foster story. Arian Foster, obviously he's running back, used to be at, uh, used to be at the Texans and was a big time cat, man. And then he went to, uh, or, or excuse me, he was from, uh, University of Tennessee and he was speaking out on how he's, you know, prior to the game, he sees, you know, a, a, a youth, you know, individuals and even adults, you know, wearing his number, wearing his jersey, wearing the Arian Foster jersey. Um, you know, coaches making multi-million dollars and they're playing in front of 70,000 fans. And then he goes home and he's eating ramen noodles. You know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and pork and beans, you know? So I think it's definitely been a long time coming. I think that it's necessary. I think that it was inevitable that it was going to happen. But I think that the regulations, I'm not sure if the regulations is a cap on how much money needs to be spent or how much money each athlete can get. But I know in its beginning state, man, it's just a free for all. You know what I mean? I, you know, I've heard, you know, some folks really getting big bags and rightly so, man. Good for them. You know, good for these student athletes whose craft and whose <laughs> avenue has allowed them to set their family straight prior to even be professionals. You know what I mean? Um, so I agree with it. Uh, I support it. Uh, I think that, you know, uh, everything in its early stages, there's going to be, you know, uh, uh, upgrades and regulations as it moves forward. Um, you know, and I think that that's that's kind of what we're going to see moving forward is 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 some kind of cap or some type of uh, standards or some type of, you know, regulations to where, you know, because right now, you know, folks, I mean, 55 million over Division One student athletes is, is a lot of money. Right. You know what I mean, and, and, and for collegiate athletes to be making more than professionals. Uh, you know, it, it is a problem in itself as well. But you, but you know what? I, I think that part makes sense in a way because when you talk about you know, big time universities, people have more of an attachment to the universities than they do to to professional you know organizations. Like you know, yeah, you'll have your large companies like um, Walmart or Disney or whatever paying to have like skyboxes at arenas and maybe paying to you know sponsor teams and stuff like that, but. You actually have the actual alumni at these different schools who may be running some smaller businesses or local businesses that have more ties to the school and want to, you know, throw that money and flex it that way more so than the pros. So, I mean, that part makes total sense to me. Yes, sir. That, that's well said. That's well said. No, I, I, I completely see what you're saying there. That's well said. And uh, I do, do want to add on um, in regards to NIL. Has that made an effect at all with your program or do you see anything coming? Um, it has not uh, just because we're kind of we're about mid-level D2, yeah. you know, and, and, and when folks kind of give the the levels that, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's power five, you know, then mid major D1, low major D1. Then they say D2, D3, NAI. Man, we're about mid-level D2. You know, mm -hmm. we're about mid-level D2. You know, the lower D2s will beat them in exhibitions. The higher D2s, the Drury, uh, you know, Central Missouri, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll beat us pretty considerably. You know what I mean? But we're about mid-level D2. So where we're at, uh, we're not immediately affected by it quite yet. Now, there are smaller local markets in which I think that uh, NAI or D2 athletes will – uh, start benefiting from the NIL more. But here in St. Louis, at Missouri Baptist, you know, or even other D2s in St. Louis, there's too, it's too big of a city, you know, where um, the financial compensation is more towards SLU, you know, it's going to be towards Lindenwood, you know, et cetera. So I'm not sure how it would or when it will uh, affect Missouri Baptist, you know, or NAIA athletes, you know, nationwide. But as of right now, it does not. So Coach Stringer's mom asked, what made you want to coach women? Um, well, honestly, man, it kind of fell into my lap. You know, I uh, – so I, I play – obviously, I played uh, – uh, play for Division One a couple of years. Uh, my senior year, uh, my wife got pregnant with my son, Sam the Third. So I moved back home, and I – uh, obviously from St. Louis. So I moved back home and I got my bachelor's. I got my master's from Missouri Baptist. 
And while I'm getting my internship at MOBAP, I was coaching at uh, Orchard Farm High School. Uh, man, it's a small town out by Newtown in St. Charles. Uh, so I'm coaching boys basketball out there. Uh, Coach Seth McDowell gave me the uh, first uh, coaching opportunity that I had, and he's actually just got the new St. Louis Community College uh, coaching gig. So shout out to him, man. Um, you know, but so so I was coaching boys originally, and then upon getting my my master's, completing my internship, Coach Iris Dixon uh, was the head women's basketball coach at Mobile. Um, you know, Iris is a is a is a mentor of mine. She's still within the university as uh, Title IX coordinator and, and, and senior women administrator, you know, so she's a, a, a well-known and well-respected individual, you know, through in, throughout the university. Uh, but she gave me the opportunity um, as an assistant coach on, on a women's team, you know, and, and shout out to her with me being, uh, I mean, I've only had, I only had one year of experience, you know, as a high school coach. But, you know, her just, I guess, through our conversations and through my playing experience, hired me on as an assistant coach. You know, so out of nowhere, you know, I went from boys basketball to collegiate women's basketball. I was an assistant coach for three years. Uh, and then I was awarded the head coach, um, you know, that fourth year. So I've been at MOBAP seven years total, um, you know, upon taking over. Um, you know, I was able to navigate, you know, and able to kind of change the perception of Missouri Baptist women's basketball, you know, within St. Louis, man, I didn't like how folks didn't know where MOBAP is, you know what I mean? Folks know where CBC is, but you don't know where MOBAP is, you know what I mean? We're, we're the same campus really, you know, so it was trying to, it, it was to change the perception a bit, to change the culture. Uh, like, like you said, kind of in the introduction, we went from 10th to eighth to fourth to third in the conference. You know, so, man, it, it's been a grind. You know, it's been a grind, but it's been rewarding. Um, you know, we won eight games our first year, man, took a lot of lumps. Uh, second year, I brought in 12 freshmen. So, you know, I told myself, you know, uh, obviously to win, you need players, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, man, we, we we brought in some of the most talented freshmen, uh, 12 of them, but we started the season 0-7. You know, I had, I had all of these mm -hmm. freshmen. Uh, everybody wanted to be the best player. You know, we had we had we had no kind of continuity. Um, you know, we weren't sharing the basketball. We're not guarding it. We're not helping the helper, man. We were just we were a mess. You know, so it took a minute for us to get that going. We ended up finishing the season 12 and 16. And then uh, COVID year, we were 17 and six, man. And COVID year was really one of the toughest years. I mean, I, worldwide, you know what I mean? But to, to try to play collegiate sports during the COVID year, man, was challenging. I mean, we were we were quarantined four different times uh, for for two weeks. Now, three of these times are because of the opposing team. You know what I mean? So we'll play somebody, we'll play a team, and within the next two days or within the 48-hour CDC rules, one of them tests positive, so they shut down our entire team for 12 – or excuse me, for, for 14 days. Man, it was challenging, you know. So we ended up finishing the season playing – uh, we played 13 games in 19 days, you know, to finish the season. Came out, came out of there 17 and six, and which was our first winning season in 10 years. And then this last year, we were 18 and 10, man. So, man, we're really looking forward to this coming year. You know, I think we went from again, we went from fourth to third in the conference. You can't go from fourth to third to second, you know. So, we'll see how it goes. You know, hopefully, all goes as well. We get everybody in here on the same page. Uh, we get it. We, we got a unit rather than a group of individuals, you know, and then, you know, made it, made it, made the, uh, chips fall, chips fall where they may, man. But we got, we got a shot to really, uh, to really do something special here this year. So before coach Strager asked her question, uh, let's take it a step further in regards to coaching. What led you into coaching in general? Uh, man, I just, I love ball, man. You know what I mean? I, I love ball again. Uh, uh, you know, ball is 100% what you put into it is what you get out of it. You know, um, I, uh, you know, me being a, uh, again, I think that at a, at a young age, I was an outstanding youth athlete. And then right about middle school, seventh, eighth grade, uh, a lot of the guys who I was better than around the St. Louis area uh, and around, you know, about a four mile, uh, four hour radius, you know what I mean? Chicago, Memphis, Nashville, et cetera. Them cats just started catching up. You know what I mean? They, they started catching up. Um, getting bigger, stronger, faster, et cetera. 
Uh, so it was time to get back to the grind. You know what I mean? When, when, when folks who I knew I was better than is now more productive on the court than I was, you know, it was time to get back to it, you know? So that kind of ignited another, I guess my second level, you know, and then throughout high school. Um, so my freshman year of high school, uh, I didn't play varsity. Now we had an elite youth basketball team, St. Louis Panthers, um, and the majority of them guys played varsity as freshmen, but I I did I I did not. Um, so man, that was man, that was just more fuel on the fire, you know. So I played JV as a freshman. Um, never dressed varsity. I I practiced with varsity, um, but never 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 dressed. And then sophomore year, I was able to play play uh, play varsity. For sophomore, junior, obviously senior year, started varsity all all those years. You know, it was all state, et cetera. Um, you know, but ball, man, is a uh, man. I love it. You know what I mean? Again, I, I love ball. I love competition. You know, I love rivalries. You know, Duke, North Carolina. I'm a North Carolina fan. Duke, North Carolina, one of the biggest rivalries ever. You know what I mean? I love rivalries. I love competition. And again, I just love seeing individuals in uh, in their own avenue, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that may be. You know, man, I went to uh, my wife and I, my wife's a, 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 a diehard Beehive Beyonce Uh-oh. fan. Uh-oh. Right? Uh-oh. Right? So listen Uh-oh. to this. So listen to this, man. So we're in Chicago. Okay. And uh, we're, at, we're at the uh, On The Run Tour. Is it On The Run? We're at the On The Run Tour. And <laughs> Beyonce walks out on stage and doesn't even say anything. She walks out and just stands there and all of Chicago went crazy, you know? And so me, I'm just sitting there, it, I, you know, I, I'm kind of taking it as just watching this individual in their own lane at the pinnacle of their lane uh, and just see how respected she is and how well liked she is and loved she is and how folks are just uh, so authentically uh, supporting her, man. You know what I mean? And that's what I like. You know what I mean? That's what I like. That's why I love ball. You know what I mean? That's why I want to be, you know, one of the uh, uh, more respected uh, individuals within the business. You know, man. But I got a lo- I got a long way to go, man. But man, I'm just I'm just rambling right now, man. I feel good talking about ball, hey, man. I love but, it. Yeah, I, I, love I, it. I love it, man. And it's and, and ball is 100, man. Most 100 relationship I'll ever be in. Coach Stringer. Now I got a, another question. So you said your wife loved Beyonce, right? Mm-hmm. So you listen to the new album yet? I have. I have. <laughs> listen, we 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 listened to it that that was morning it dropped. We listened to it. So let me tell you, let me tell you part two of that story. So we was in Chicago, loved it, had a great time, partying. Jay came on, Jay came on uh, on stage. You know what I mean? B obviously did her thing. We loved it so much. My wife loved it so much. So we went from Chicago to St. Louis. She loved it so much. We booked we booked tickets to New Orleans, and we went two days later. We went down and we drove ten hours and seen it, seen the uh, same show in New Orleans. <laughs> the exact same show, seen it in New Orleans, man. We had a good it. time. Love you it, know? love it. That's what's up. Uh, and you had a, 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 another question, excuse me, Coach. Yes. So, what is your end goal as a as a head coach? I should say. Man, it's a great question, and I've kind of toyed with that uh, back and forth now. Um, here the last couple of years, or really this year, you know, is, is, is what is the end goal? And I don't have a for sure answer to that. I don't know if the end goal is, uh, financially. I don't know if the end goal is a comfortability level. I don't know if there's a, the end goal is a specific city that I'm looking for, you know, um, you know, but a uh, wise man once said, you want to be in a place where you're not looking for the next place. Mm. You know what I mean? And I don't know, uh, you know, and, and I'm very comfortable where I'm at and I'm very, uh, you know, appreciative of my current circumstances. You know what I mean? And, and my balls, Dr. Tom Smith is, you know, has got my back through and through, um, you know, but but so I don't know what that what that ultimate goal is. You know, I mean, I think that there's a comfort level, you know, ultimately in life, you're looking for that, 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 that level or that job or that security to where you can just settle in, you know what I mean? And you're no longer grinding, you're more comfortable, you know, or you're content, 
And uh, and I don't know what that's going to look like for me. You know, I think that right now I'm still in grind mode. Um, right now, I think that I'm, you know, I, I, I feel that, um, you know, I, I want to be elite. You know, I want to be, I thought that I was an elite basketball player, but for whatever reason, my basketball career wasn't elite, you know? So how else can I be elite? You know, I think that earning a doctorate degree in higher education leadership is elite. You know, I think that uh, winning a conference championship here at Missouri Baptist would be elite, you know? So that's kind of what I'm striving to, you know, I don't want to be good. I don't want to be great. I wanted to be an, an elite individual, you know what I mean? Uh, and in the meantime, you know, I want to uh, continue to just leave a positive impact, you know what I mean? On the, on the, on the, on the individuals in which I lead, you know what I mean? I want to, uh, I want to coach, I want to mentor, I want to, um, Whenever I leave or whenever I move on, you know, each life that I done touch, man, I want it to be in a special way. You know what I mean? So I think that that's, um, you know, I guess what I'm striving for, you know, but to answer your question, I don't really got no answer for it. You know what I mean? I just want, I don't know what that ultimate contentment is, but right now I'm just still in i I'm pedal to the metal. I'm still in grind mode right now. Who are some of your coaching inspirations? Man, great question. So uh, my boy, Fraze, y'all shout it out, Fraze here. Uh, 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 be, be in, in an introduction, man. Phrase has been, you know, Phrase was one of so Phrase coached me when I was at Brad Billy Lee, which is which was formerly the St. Louis Eagles. Phrase coached me there, man, and he was one of the coaches who, uh, he was tough as hell, man. He was tough as hell, you know. I feel like the coaches maybe prior to kind of stroked my ego and kind of let me did what I want to, and Phrase brought me back down to earth, you know what I mean? You ain't nothing, you know, or. You think you this, but you ain't that. And this where you could be, but you ain't here yet. You know, Phrase is a real cat, man. So so shout out Phrase for that. Um, you know, here within the St. Louis area. Uh, my boy Preston Ingram, man, is is now the men's coach at, at Missouri Baptist. And uh and he's helped me along the way. He's helped me a great deal grow as a coach. Um, man, P knows his stuff, man. He knows his stuff. He's been around the way, he's been IMG, he's a MoCan guy, you know, he's been on the D2 level. He's been in NAI level, man. He knows his stuff, you know, and I'm humble enough to understand that knowledge is endless, you know, and I don't, and I don't know enough, you know, so just to sit in his office, him sit in mine, bounce ideas back and forth, you know, et cetera. Uh, he just won a conference championship. Uh, the men's basketball team at MOBAP just won a conference championship last year. So man, he really knows his stuff. So Preston Ingram, man, has been, uh, you know, is, is, is helped me along the way a great deal. Uh, Brandon Gilmore, my big brother, man, he's at Hazelwood Central right now. Coach he, was a, uh, he was a previous guest on our show uh, yeah. over, over two years ago or so now. Yep, yep, yep. The Brandon Gilmore, Tone down at Vashon, man. So them, them the local guys, man, who who I look up to. You know what I mean? Who uh, as as a as a youth athlete, you know, they were always guys who I looked up to as players, and then started looking up to them as coaches, you know, and as trainers. Um, you know, but 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 nationwide, uh, man, Jeff Jeff Waltz at uh, at at Louisville, man, I got a, one of my one of my former college teammates is now at Louisville, man. So I kind of got a different uh, lens in which I look through their program at. Man, Jeff Waltz knows his stuff. Don Staley is is a boss, man. I seen Don at a uh, uh, we were at Tournament of Champions in Chicago, you know, and just mm-hmm. how she carries herself and how she moves, man. She's a one hundred individual. She's authentic. What you see on TV, excuse me, is is who she is in person. You know what I mean? And that's that's mad respect. You know what I mean? I respect that a lot. Shaka Smart, you know, is kind of is kind of an individual who I try to play or bounce ideas or try to take some of his ideas and how he presses and 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 the different schemes, you know, that he has as an individual. And I am Bob Huggins as well. But but I mean that just that just you know that just names a few. Uh, you know, what I mean, obviously I got more of a connection, more of an interpersonal relationship with the St. Louis guys. But man, there's a lot of man. There's a lot of good coaches in this business. You know what I mean? And again, uh, 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 knowledge is 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 endless, uh, and it's a um, it's a copycat game. You know what I mean? If somebody's doing something well uh, on the NBA level, then you see it at the D1 level. You know what I mean? Right. And then it kind of and it kind of trickles down. Man, it's a copycat. It's a copycat game, man. You know, don't rewrite the wheel. Let's just you know run the same things just uh, with more precision. So. You brought up a few times now Hazelwood Central High School, and I had to bring this up because my wife went there. So shouts out to my wife, Jamie. Love you. 
Uh, she went to Hazelwood Central. What year did you go there? 2007 is when I graduated. Oh, okay, so yeah, she was already gone. So yeah. uh, just tell us briefly just about your time, your career at Hazelwood Central. Yeah, it, it seemed like you was uh you was the man on on campus during that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, something like it, man. So my freshman year, <laughs> my freshman year, the man was Kalen Grimes. Okay. okay. Yeah, Kalen Grimes ended up going to Mizzou. Yeah. Uh, but, man, they were loaded that year. They were loaded that year, and that's really why I didn't end up playing varsity. Uh, man, it was a couple of guys, man, Kalen Grimes, Alex Tyus, Aaron Jackson, Zach Riley, Derek Johnson. They go on. The list go on. Mo Smith, man. That's my boy Mo. He's in my wedding, but. Yeah, man. So they they were so loaded that year that I ended up playing JV, um, and and I and like I said, you know, I think a couple of couple of couple of minutes ago, man, that that was really a spark for me. You know, I always try to, I, I feel like I'm a self motivator. You know what I mean? If you're gonna shit on me in this, uh, excuse my language, but if you're gonna, you know, overlook me in this way, then I'm gonna use it as fuel and I'm gonna show you type of mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, man, I really tore it up on the JV level. You know what I mean? 20 plus a game or so. Then my sophomore year um, is when I began starting on varsity. So I started, you know, three years uh, on a varsity level, man. And, um, you know, uh, uh, growing up, I was always a scoring guard, you know, but being with these prolific athletes, you know, Alex Tyus went to Florida, you know, uh, being with these prolific athletes, Marvin McNutt, man, one of my best friends, all-time leading receiver at Iowa, played, played a couple of years pro. Um, but you know, I had to be more of a point guard. You know, I mean, I had to be the leader. I was a natural born leader, but to be able to give them the rock where they needed it, keep them happy, still control the game, you know, as I was just kind of a floor general out there, you know what I mean? So that was really sophomore year. Uh, and then junior and senior year, man, we really tore it up, man. You know, I mean, I really, I, I really tore it up, you know, uh, uh broke some records, uh, scoring wise, assists, steals, etc. At, at central. Uh, but man, so so it's kind of the dark cloud over Hazelwood Central is that we've never won a state championship. Mm. Um, partly because of our district. So the suburban north, the old suburban north, was just uh, a bloodbath, man. You know what I mean? But Hazelwood Central, Hazelwood East, Hazelwood West, McClure North, McClure Normandy, Rittner, Pattonville. Uh, Murder some, right some, somebody, somebody say Normandy. I feel, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Viking <laughs> Hall, man. Viking Hall, one of my favorite places the, to play, man. The, the the best arena in St. Louis. That's right. That's right. Classic. As in matter of fact, man, I I heard that they may be hosting uh the D Miles and and Larry Hughes. They're having mm -hmm. they're having like a collaborative uh, right. uh, uh showcase. I think. Yeah, basketball. I heard that they're trying to do that at Viking Hall, man. That would be classic, right there, man. Yeah. But yeah, man. So I mean, it was a. So we, we never won a state championship, you know. I mean, back then we were we we lost to uh, my freshman year. We lost to Poplar Bluff. Uh, we used to lose to to the V. Uh, now us us against Vashon my junior year was one of the craziest games in you know what I mean in all of my high school career. Uh, they was obviously number one in the state, man. And we went in there, man. We uh, you know, it was no backing down. You know what I mean? Obviously, they think you know you know how it is. It's St. Louis. It's the city against the county. You know what I mean? So the city, they thought that these, you know what I mean, the number one country, number one team in the country from the city about to, you know, uh, bully these county boys. And it, and it wasn't that at all, you know. So, man, we ended up losing. I think we lost by eight or so, uh, you know. But Vashon is who used to run our class back then. And then now it's CBC. Now it's Chaminade. You know, now it's the private school. So Hazelwood Central year after year has one of the, best records in the state, you know, top ranked in the state, you know, et cetera. But man, we just can't get over the hump and get that state championship. Mm, got, yep. you, got you. And, and my wife also loves Beyonce. So she, you know, her, her, her alias is uh Jay Yonce. So <laughs> that's and, right. And she probably was there at the, on the run tour in Chicago too. Cause she did say that she did, did go to a concert in Chicago. So that may have been the same one on the, uh, on the run tour. So you may have seen her. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right yes so once again this is the platform sports talk show i am your boy smooth right above me we have t-bone and right above him we have coach stringer and right over here we have special guests coach sam pearson there you go see it wasn't scripted it was no rehearsal he ready for it 
And he said to us earlier that it's his first time a uh, St. Louis media outlet has reached out to him. So it's definitely an honor to have him on the show. This has been great so far. We'll uh, want to go ahead and say for those on uh, Hot 365 Radio, y'all may not hear us anymore. So, <laughs> of course, we're here on Facebook and on Twitter and on YouTube. So bring them comments. Let's continue to have a great time with Coach. Uh, so, Coach, uh, can you tell us about balancing coaching, fatherhood, and being a husband? Mm. That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one, smooth man. I I, I struggle with it. Um, you know, I think I th- I think I said before, man. I, I I'm a competitor. I mean, I want to be the best in everything I'm doing. You know, but as a but coaching at the level that I'm at and at the, you know, with given my current circumstances, I can't be great at anything simultaneously. You know what I mean, I can't be a great coach as well as a great father, as well as a great husband, as well as a great uncle, as well as a great brother. You know what I mean? I can't be great at them all at once. And it's a struggle, you know. Um, shout out to my wife, man. You know, my wife is what holds it down. Um when I'm locked into the season, I'm locked in. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a it's a 80-20 split. You know what I mean? That I'm so locked in because um, there's so much that comes with the collegiate basketball season. You know what I mean? Before you even step on the court. So when I'm locked in, beginning of September, I'm locked in. You know, now Thanksgiving break, you know, I'll take a couple of days off. And Christmas, we might have a week off. But other than that, it's my wife holding down the fort. You know what I mean? It's my wife holding down the kids. It's my wife who's taking the uh, the kids to sports, you know, but it's also her who's at the game. You know what I mean? Sitting in the top left behind the bench yelling at me. You know what I mean? So, man, she's my biggest she's my biggest support, man. She's my biggest critic at, at times. You know what I mean? She's a former collegiate basketball player at, uh, at Lindenwood. You know, so, man, um, shout out to her, man. You know what I mean? She is a uh, uh, how do I balance it is is her really, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think that uh, as collegiate basketball coaches, I, now I can only speak for myself, but I live two different lives. You know what I mean? You live an in-season life and you live an out-season life. You know, in-season is so locked in and, you know, we're, uh, given my current circumstances, you know, so just to kind of let y'all in a little bit of what, what we got going on, man, we have, so we have 45 student athletes uh, as women's basketball players. Um, out of those 45, uh, there's there's a certain percentage of roughly 60 percent that they want us to pay of 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 all of their uh or excuse me of their tuition you know so that kind of brings some financial issues you know um there's some there there's just there's just some hindrances you know what i mean that that you know that that we got to deal with um but you know again you got you got to play the hand that you dealt you know so if the extra long hours late nights early mornings is what it's going to take then we're going to stay above ground. We're going to stay above water and we're going to make it rock how we need to, you know, but that comes at the expense of family time. Sometimes, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? That comes at the expense of, you know, not being able to sit down with the, with, with, with the wife and watch Ozarks or whatever series we were watching at the time. You know what I mean? And that's, man, that wears on you, man. You know what I mean? That wears on you mentally. Um, you know, to not be able to give home and give your loved ones uh, 100% you or to not be able to be great at home or not be able to be a great father or miss games and miss practices from your kids, man, that 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 take a toll on you, man. So whenever mm. I'm out of season, uh, again, that's that second life where I got it, where I'm playing catch up. You know what I mean? I'm trying to make everything, you know, kids got donuts for dads. I'm there. You know what I mean? I'm trying to I'm trying to cover everything, all bases while I'm out of season and give them as much love as I can. You know what I mean? Because when I'm in season, you know, it's it, it's a whole different switch, man. You know, but it kind of sucks, man. It kind of sucks that you can't be great at them all at once, you know, because you stretch too thin. You know what I mean? So um, this year I've kind of uh, I feel like in my growth, in my growth as a coach is to allocate uh uh more tasks and more duties and more responsibilities to my assistant coaches you know and I, and that has helped a great deal too you yeah. know what I mean so 
So Strain, Coach Tyree, man, they, they've helped me a great deal, you know, and, and give me that opportunity to, you know, I ain't missed, uh, you know, I ain't missed no, no, no events or anything like that here recently, but obviously we ain't been in season. So, man, it's, it's tough, though. It's a tough balance. It's a tough balance in that. There's two different lives you live in season and out of season, um, you know, but also I also feel like, like I said, I think I feel like in season is 80, 20, you know, but out of season is 60, 40 because the grind don't never stop. The basketball grind don't never stop. You know what I mean? It ain't 80, 20 and then flip it 20, 80. No, you know what I mean? It's still 60, 40, man. You know what I mean? Because now it's recruiting. Now it's preparing my team. Now I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm in Louisville or I'm in Chicago or I'm in KC, you know, trying to recruit, find players, sign players, et cetera, man. That grind never stops, you know. But shout out to my wife, man. She's the only way that I'm able to balance it, man, you know, if I'm being 100. That's what's up, man. Before we continue, Coach, I know you got to go ahead. Coach Stringer, I know you got to go ahead and go. So any last words? Shout out to your wife, Coach P. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> For for me, the little time I've known you, and um, for this to be your first platform talk, I feel like you're glowing, man. I feel like this year gonna be dope for you, and whatever you have coming, I'm glad that we encountered and met each other because I just feel like I see so much potential in you. I know sometimes you say stuff like that to me, but no, like I look up to you. You might not know, like just talking to you these last couple of weeks, like your mindset is different, and yeah. the way you talk and the things you put into your 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 team and who you are as a person, I have nothing respect for you. So. Whatever you have coming, you glowing, man, and I wish you all the success that you have coming for you. So I'm proud of you right now. I want you to soak this moment in and build from it. So like, yeah, girl. man, that's love, string. That's love, man. That's love, and, and vice versa, man. It's always been 100. It's always been authentic, uh, man. I appreciate your, uh, I appreciate what you're doing. You know what I mean for the for the game and pushing the game forward. You know, being a trailblazer for the game. Super excited to bring you on board. Add you to the staff, man. Can't wait to grow with you, continue to learn you more, you know what I mean, and continue to connect with you, man. So I appreciate you, String. All love. Yeah, so sure. what he means is – Oh, I'm sorry. So what he means is that we did have some breaking news that Coach Stringer will officially be part of the staff with Coach Sam Pearson at Missouri Baptist College up for the upcoming basketball season. So breaking news out here on the platform, Sports Talk Show. Uh, T Bone, I know you have to go as well. You're at the airport, like, about to load up, about to, uh, be on uh, on the uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed at the, that we have the guests that we have, you know, hearing inspirational people, people with drive, people with vision, people leading others. You know, I, I always like to get a dose of hearing about that, so you know, Coach Pearson, uh, I, I was glad to hear you talk today, glad to hear from you. Uh, that photo booth business, uh, we may need to talk soon, but uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm always glad to uh, to hear from everybody. So, smooth coach Stringer, glad to be with y'all tonight, and uh, hopefully, I'll be leaving this airport tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers up, man, for a safe travel, my dude. All right, see, Bone, right. it's been good connecting, brother. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, thank you, coach Stringer. See you later. Have a good all one, all right. right? All right. Talk to you guys soon. All right. And now it's just us two. It's as just us we, two, huh, Smooth? As we winding down on the platform, Sports Talk Show, once again, your Wednesday night sports delight. Once again, leave some comments, y'all, questions, whatever y'all have, and I'll make sure that it's shown the screen and you'll be shown worldwide as well, y'all, on the platform, Sports Talk Show. Uh, I want to add a few more questions uh, in regards to the balancing part. You brought in regards to your incredible wife who has been holding things down. Do you think it's because she can relate because she also was a hooper as well? Yeah, 100 percent. I do. Um, and, and, and in all honesty, that's what attracted us to each other. You know, uh, we, we've been high school sweethearts, got together junior year of high school. Uh, she was a transfer, came from uh, Tulsa, uh, so moved back home. She originally from St. Louis, too, so she moved back home, and we were both, you know, I mean, obviously on, on the basketball team, so that's kind of what attracted to us or, or attracted us to each other as a, you know, as a, as the cliche love in basketball, you know what I mean, type of deal. So uh, I 100% uh, uh, think, though, you know, I think that, you know, through her uh, playing ball, understanding the grind, you know, understanding the sacrifice, understanding the the time commitment, 
you know, that's why we're able to balance it. You know, now, um, you know, I, it, it ain't easy. You know, it ain't easy. It's never easy, you know, uh, on her part. Uh, it's never easy on my part. It's never easy. Uh, there's ups, there's downs. You know, I mean, I think that that's in everything that you do in life. You know, I mean, it's going to have its pros. It's going to have its cons. It's going to have its trials. It's going to have its tribulations, you know. But, uh, you know, her being a former athlete, her understanding the grind, our kids being up and coming athletes, you know, it helps. Um, it kind of puts a bandage, you know what I mean, on the on the on the time that I'm not there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's an understanding, you know, and now, you know, we can, you know, with 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 media outlets, it's so easy to watch the games on on TV, you know, or I'm always on FaceTime with them. You know what I mean? Or we're always connecting. So even when we're not in person interacting, you know, we're still able to be on the same page. You know what I mean? I think that that helps a great deal. Um, but yeah, man, uh, uh, again, again, smooth. I can't, I can't stress it enough, man. It, it takes a toll on you mentally, man. You know what I mean? Cause you know, uh, um, you know, you miss a lot, you know, with your kids growth, you know, with your kids schooling, you know, but luckily i'm i'm here in st louis obviously they're here in st louis you know so there there could it could be worse you know what i mean so I'm, right. I'm thankful for the opportunity i got thankful for the support system i got you know my mother my father my in-law shout out mama g so now i'm gonna I'm shout out mama g here real quick so mama g is uh is my in-law who uh opened up the lock shop down in tulsa on the historical black wall street so man, she's been she's been really really doing good things, man. Really a pioneer down there as well, man. So shout out the in laws, man. Shout out my my parents, man. But we got a great support system, you know that kind of that kind of holds it down, man. But it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of commitment, um, you know. And 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 it, and, it, and it's got its up and ups and downs, you know. So tell us about your proudest moment as being a coach. Oh man. So, man, hands down, man, it was this past year. Um, so prior to this year, Missouri Baptist, uh, our biggest rivalry is Columbia College, you mm. know, uh, uh, up in Columbia. Um, you know, in every sport, you know, Columbia is, uh, with all due respect, Columbia is one of the prototypes of NAIA, you know what I mean, in every sport because of their facilities, you know what I mean, because of their finances, you know, et cetera. You know, Columbia College is one of the elites, you know, so Missouri Baptist women's basketball has not beat Columbia College since like 2004, I think it was, you know. So uh, I got the chance to get really close to their uh, former head coach, Coach Taylor Postale, who was a, uh, a friend, who was a competitor and who was also kind of a mentor of mine. You know what I mean? As well, you know. So, uh, man, last year. So last year we're playing. We're we had just got beaten up. They, they had beat us up, man, at their place, mm. uh, beat us by 20 or so. And we played him at our place. I think we ended up losing by three. And so I seen him out recruiting. I said, I'm going to tell you what. I said, I've slowly closed this gap between you and I, and I'm going to come get you this year. All right. You know, so I, I'm, um, <laughs> I have believe it, you know, but I'm also a competitor. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to talk my, talk my noise to him. Right. You right. Know, I'm right. Come to get you. Right. And so one of my former players, her little sister, ended up going to Columbia rather than Mobile through field mm -hmm. on the fire. Right. And they were at the game. So they came to they came to Mobile. Man, and we put it on them, man. We put it on them. Um, first time we beat them in 32 tries. Oh, so that's kind of that's kind of the second half of it. You know, so two years ago when they beat us, they're tweeting uh, all of their social medias. Uh, we beat them 30 in a row. We've beat Mobap 30 in a row this, 30 in a row that. This is pure dominance. 30 this, 30 that, 30 in a row. You know what I mean? Man, it, it, man, I'm talking. So we we printed out these tweets and we got them in the locker room, you know, mm. throwing fuel on the fire. You know, I said, we're gonna get them this year. It's only a matter of time. Uh so man, that was my that was my biggest, that was my biggest accomplishment as a coach. You know what I mean? On the court, uh, is to finally beat the big time rival. Now, uh, they ended up beating us in the conference championship or excuse me, the conference semifinals. You know, uh, they're still uh, the prototype. They're still the head honcho, mm -hmm. you know, but we we were the better team that night, you know. So 
uh, that's on the court. Now, off the court, uh, this past year, we were able to set a record with 3.63 team GPA. Nice. You know? And that, man, that is a – man, we got we got a group at Mobat Moves, man. We got a group that are just young, aspiring student athletes. You know what I mean? They're not no knuckleheads. We don't got no knuckleheads. We ain't got no problem children. You know what I mean? We ain't got no we ain't got no girls, you know, with all that uh all that attitude, neck popping, you know what I mean? All that. No, we don't got that. You know what I mean? We have aspiring student athletes. You know what I mean? We have up and coming um uh scientists and we have nurses, you know what I mean? And we got uh coaches, you know, in the making, etc. man. So, to have a 363 man as a team, record setting uh, man, it's been a great accomplishment, man. You know, it, it, it really has. And and things are just kind of coming full circle. Uh, I really had to get it through the mud, you know, at Mobap, man. We were we were struggling program, you know, uh, uh, year after year. Uh, so we really had to get it through the mud, man. But to finally see this thing starting to blossom, you know what I mean? We're winning games, beating the rivals. You know what I mean? Our, our uh, fan support is crazy. You know what I mean? We're starting to now – you know what I mean? I'm gonna be real. You know, uh, two years ago, a uh, 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 well-known assistant like Coach Stringer doesn't come to the staff. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, but through the things that we're doing, through the things that we're building, how we're able to change the perception, change the culture a bit, man. This thing is really blossoming, man. So it's uh man, it's been humbling, man, and glory to God, man. He's been he's been in our corner, uh, you know, all along the way. You know, through the ups and downs, blood, sweat, and tears, man. Love it. Let's yeah. talk about this picture right here, man. What was going on here? <laughs> oh, man, y'all done went through the archives, found this one. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you this. I'm a fiery coach, Smooth. You know, <laughs> I uh, I feel like off the court, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mild man, a 100 guy. On the court, I'm locked in, all right? So this is – we're playing Olivet Nazarene, all right, out of Chicago area. <laughs> Olivet Nazarene plays the fastest brand of basketball you'll ever see. Mm. All right. They sub in five in, five out, five in, five out. They play 15 players for about two minutes at a time. All right. They're flying. Right. So this is the game. This is one of the games, man, uh, where they're coming to our place. We ended up losing. But, man, it was a crazy game, man. I think it went, ended up going to OT, man. So I'm locked in with them. You know, and that's kind of how I coach, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to be my team's biggest cheerleaders. You know what I mean? But I'm going to also, uh, you know what I mean, get them in line when, when when we need to. You know, but, man, I'm a fiery cat. I'm a fiery coach. I love what I do. I love my team. I love them as individuals. I love them as a unit. You know what I mean? I love everything about the grind, man. So that's just one of them times where we're so locked in, where we're in the heat of the battle. You know what I mean? Where I'm making my adjustments uh Olivet is making their adjustments you know what I mean I'm bouncing they're bouncing you know what I mean we're, we're just we're going back and forth man it's a grind again it's a battle it's a competition you know I mean that's what I love about it so that's one of them that's one of them uh that's one of them classic photos of me man I'm, I'm locked in when I'm locked in I tell my team you got to hit the switch mm-hmm. all right mm-hmm. everybody says practice game speed right every coach around America says you got to practice game speed but you cannot simulate game speed okay it's a switch that everybody hits from the coaches, from the players, from the teams. You got to hit that switch. And when it's time to go, when them lights on, it's time to go, you know. And uh, and so, man, that's just me and my element right there, man. That's just me. I'm not worried about nobody else. Uh, you know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't, I'm locked in right now, tunnel vision. You know what I mean? I don't hear anything. I don't see anything besides the game. I'm so locked in with tunnel vision, man. That's just, that's just kind of me and my element right there, man. I love I it. Love. I love it. Yep, so speaking it. of which, man, uh, the question I love to ask coaches, uh, what can opposing coaches look forward to when they step into your gym or when you step into their gym and y'all about to battle? What are they looking forward to? Man, they know I'm coming with it. They know I'm coming with it. They know I'm a competitor. Um, and it's kind of hurt me. Yeah, I mean, be real with you, Smooth. It's kind of hurt me with my relationships with other coaches in the conference. You know, because outside of the court, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to joke. I'm going to shake hands. We can sit down, have some lunch, you know, or catch a happy hour. You know what I mean? And and, and that's the type of cat I am. But when I hit that switch, I'm at your neck. I'm a competitor. You know what I mean? 
I'm trying to take you out of what you want to do uh, and be one step ahead of your adjustment. You know what I mean? I want to I want to know your adjustment. I'm at your neck, you know, so it's kind of hindered my relationships with other coaches um, that I've noticed. You know what I mean? And, and there's no love lost. But when it's go time, it's go time. Right. And I'm rolling with my team. I'm rolling with my university. I'm rolling with the group I got. And I'm going to take them against anybody I'm playing, you know. Man, let me tell you this story. So I'm playing uh, I'm playing uh, Central Methodist, man. Central Methodist is Final Four team, man. You know what I mean? Well coached, really knows what they're doing. Coach Davis uh, is, at, is, is the head coach down at CMU. And then Coach Remy, man, he just got the new job at uh, – at Illinois, Chicago, man, really knows his stuff. But man, so they're 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 number four in the country, right? They come to they come to Mobile. They kind of they kind of half assing in warm ups. They're laughing, they're joking. After the first half, we put it on them. You know what I mean? I done threw the press on them. I I, I got I took them out of what they wanted to do. You know what I mean? I extended the big. They got like a six four big that I brought away from the basket. So we're beating her off the dribble, hitting corner triples, passing up good looks for great looks. We're playing a great brand, right? Mm-hmm. So. Halftime, the teams got to pass each other to go to the locker rooms, you know. And again, I done hit my switch, you know. So I'm walking down, I'm hype. I said, Man, they thought this was gonna be sweet. They thought this was gonna be sweet. They came to Mobap thinking this gonna be sweet, thinking this was gonna be a pushover. They got us messed up, right? So we go out, we go out, we go back on the court, man. They beat us 26 to 6 Woo! In, the, in the third quarter. <laughs> put it on, <laughs> put it on the smooth. Let me tell you. They on the court talking trash. Man, this cheesecake sweet. This cheesecake sweet. This this banana pudding sweet. You know what I mean? Talking bad to us. So I done, you know what I mean? In my own trash talking, in my own competitiveness, I done woke up. You know what I mean? I done, I done woke them up after the game. Coach, Coach says to me, he said, hey, man, don't ever poke a bear again. <laughs> Next time, let me sleep. I said, oh, man. And I love that, though. You know what yeah, I mean? I love that, yeah. man. I love that competitiveness. Competition. I yeah. love that competition, man. And, and so let me tell you this: we're gonna be we going back to CMU. We go play them at their place this year. So hey. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. And you know, it sounds like you know, like your mindset sounds like uh, when I was watching. I don't know. A lot of people probably have watched it by now. That's the Last Dance, and oh, how yeah. you know Jordan didn't have a lot of you know maybe a lot of great friends in the league or whatever because he knew that. It was game time. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't matter until the, the last buzzer sound and I win the game. <laughs> 100%. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I Man, it's that you, famous clip. Small totally way to say, yeah. He got that famous clip where he say, uh, uh, I think it's it's winning has its price. Yeah. Leadership has its price. Yep. You know? So what, you know, that I didn't got into their butts, you know, but I ain't I ain't never asked them to do anything that I ain't did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, if that comes at the cost of not being a good guy, then so be it. You know what I mean? But everybody can't win like that. You know what yep. I mean? And that's just kind of that competitive. I try to be on the court. You know what I mean? But I try to be, a, you know what I mean, but I'm a genuine cat off the court. You know what I mean? But when it's time, when it's time to go to war, man, you know, it's time to go to war. That's what's up. So uh, I believe my 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 wife is is finally tuned in. So she doesn't know this, but Coach Sam Pearson also went to Hazelwood Central High School. So I know that she like, hey, I like him already. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and uh, he and his wife is definitely his wife loves Beyonce, and they went to the uh, on the run tour years back in Chicago. And wifey, uh, uh, I was telling him that you probably was there too at that same event years back. So y'all have a few things in common right there. So that's what's yeah. up. So she yeah, just that's right. Liked, she just liked the uh the the uh the interview and everything. So she's watching. She may comment any second now. But yes, he, uh, he went to Hazelwood Central High School. He, now he was class a class of 07, though. Yeah. So uh she had we have you on age. I went to the V uh okay. in 2000. So I know all about the pit. I know all about the you know the, the years there, man. Yep. So, and my family went to the V. Uh, my mom went there. Uh, cousins went there. One cousin coached with Floyd Irons at the time. Mm. So, yeah, so I, I have these side blood since I was a little baby, man. So uh, definitely, love. definitely know about the V, man. Uh, That's once love. Again, That's love. And an incredible interview with Coach Sam Pearson. 
a question that I've been wanting to ask you is, especially with you coaching women, what is the biggest misconception about women in, in, in basketball? Um, it's the quality of basketball. Man, women play, now I'm biased in saying this, but women play a better brand of basketball than men. I've been saying that. Women Trust play me, men. I have been saying that because, yep. because you know, and I know that they've there have been request recently to like lower the rim so more women can dunk but yeah. stuff like that but women have to work harder using their skills to get a point compared to men can just jump over people like it ain't nothing 100%. it requires more skill and i think that's why I like my my late uh grandfather how he loves watching women's basketball how my mom she mm -hmm. loves watching college women's basketball and the WNBA. she loves she loves it all but she yep. definitely loves just watching uh, college basketball and the WNBA because women have to work harder to get to that goal. 100%. 100%. The women's game uh, is more of the fundamentals of the game. You know what I mean? Dribbling, passing, shooting, screening, cutting, mm -hmm. uh, shooting, passing up goods for greats, helping the helper, boxing. Now the men, now now this is the thing. Obviously, you gotta have good players, right? But right. in the men's game, the bigger, stronger, faster athletes are gonna win typically. You know what I mean? It's about the athletes, whereas the women's game is more about who is the better team and who has better fundamentals of the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, I've been saying this for years. I believe that the reason in which mid-majors beat high majors more so now than ever before, um, say, for instance, in an the, in the NCAA tournament, is because the high majors have the better athletes. The mid-majors, low majors, have the better basketball players. Mm -hmm. Right? The mid-majors have the better uh, IQ athletes. Now, sure, this is a 6-1, a, 6-2 a, a six, six, point rather than a 6-5, six, 6-6 six, six point, but this dude run the show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure, it's a six eight big and not a seven one big. You know what I mean? But his he finished right to left shoulder. He got a counter. He know how to read the pick and roll. He know how to help off of it. You know, etc. These are the better basketball players. Now, not the better athletes, but the better basketball players. You know what I mean? And I think that that is why. And I've said this for a couple of years. That is why the uh, that's why mid majors and low majors, or even D twos, Northwest or Northeast Mo, uh, or Northwest Mo has been running D2s, you know what I mean? About to do to the wire uh, in an exhibition, you know what I mean? These are the better basketball players, but not better athletes. On the women's side, there's a lot less, uh, 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 the quantity of athletes, quantity of quality ball players, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know what I mean? Every, every male athlete thinks he can hoop, you know what I mean? But there's a lot less quantity athlete of women's basketball players, but it's more about, the fundamentally sound, the better teams, the better coach teams, the more disciplined teams, um, the teams who execute O's uh, down the stretch, the teams that stay composed the longest are the teams that's going to win. You know what I mean? So that's what the the women's game is more about, man. I think that the women's game is a better brand than the men's game. Now, less flashy, um, less appealing to watch. Um, but it's more when you look at ball at its foundational state. What is basketball? You know uh, that that James Nave Smith made it up to be a women's basketball game is more of that than a men's basketball game. And I do want to add this on to uh, continuity. You yep. see more continuity with mid majors than you do with the the Dukes and Kentucky because you got one one and done. So you can't learn to grow as a team together because you're not together long enough. That's why you, you haven't seen recently like, the Dukes and the Kentuckys and other schools like that losing to, you know, the mid-majors and stuff like that or losing to, uh, you know, lesser programs but because they have had like, a continuity for two, three-plus years. Yep. Uh, you know, they're able to grow and learn how to win. Where you have that one school, that they have five freshmen that's just all the, off the chain, but when times get tough, 
they don't know how to handle that pressure together. 100%. 100%. So I definitely, it comes with experience and continuity. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So that, that's definitely been uh, definitely a good uh, answer, and I definitely feel you on, on that. So last question I have for you, man. Any special shout outs? Oh man, man, I feel like I gotta shout out, I gotta shout out a lot of folks here um since I've been on, man. But uh my number one shout out is 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 my lady, man, is my wife, shout out Pearson, uh been holding me down, man. So so shout out my wife, shout out my kids, Sam the third and Sophie, uh, who are who are uh young athletes in themselves, man, who are going to you know, really be good, man. I love them, you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to push them. Shout out my pops, my mom, my brother, Darian Guthrie, Anthony, who is from uh Hazelwood East Cat. You know, he a Hazelwood East Cat. So obviously we uh <laughs> Hazelwood Central Hazelwood East, man. We we clash a bit, man. But you know, shout out um uh uh Mobap, you know, shout out Mobap, shout out my uh uh my athletic director Tom Smith. Uh, Preston Ingram, you know, over at Mobat Man, and, and and I mean, there's there's many more, uh, you know, but just shout out individuals who, um, you know, love ball and treat ball for what it is. You know, mm-hmm. ball is the truest relationship you're gonna be in, man. So be 100 with ball, and it'll give you 100 back, man. So, uh, man, I got a lot of shout outs, man. Uh, a couple of coaches, I want to shout out a couple of coaches. Jason James, one of my uh. One of my coaches at UT Martin, obviously Frage, um, Coach uh, Jamie Rosser, Dickie Nutt at uh, at Simo, uh, Coach Coach Farrell, man, Coach Farrell is a coach that I had at at uh, MBU, man, before uh, uh, before I was a, before I was a coach, man, I, I went to I played MoBat my last year, man, and he's really the guy who changed my life. You know, as as far as uh, spiritually, you know what I mean, and made me the man I am, man. So. Man, big respect to a uh, big respect to a lot of lot of lot of folks, you know, who I've came across, you know, and, and those who I've missed. You know, I want to shout out obviously the platform, man. This has been this has been amazing, man. St. Louis Sports Talk, man, has been been one hundred, man. Again, I um, I uh, I'm honored, man. I'm honored. You know, me being from St. Louis, this feels uh, kind of rewarding. You know, what I mean, to be able to talk here on the St. Louis Sports Program. You know, what I mean, with you, Smooth T Bone, I seen Joe on before. You know, String was just on, man. So. This is good, man. I uh, I love to join the man cave at some point, man. I think that Got that'd you. be, you know what I mean, Got that'd you. be a good time, man. That'd be 100, man. But, you know, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Uh, this has been a heck of an experience, man. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to further connecting. Shout out Mobat Women's Basketball, man. We're going to be oh, good well. this year. You know what I mean? Let's get to the grind, man. One day at a time, one practice at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And maybe uh, maybe we, we put some rings on our fingers by the end of the year, but. That's it, man. That's it, Smooth. I hey, appreciate you. Shout out, Smooth, it. man. Jackson hey, Ball trades, boss. There you go. And, <laughs> uh, you know, definitely keep in touch, man. Uh, hopefully I can make, maybe make a game. I, I need the VIP treatment. I get there, front row seat. Let's go. Everything. Everything. Come on. Come All on. Right, man. So, <laughs> That's a bet. Uh, if you don't mind, just stay on. We're going to do a little post-show talk. Yeah. I have to go ahead and close out this show. So hold on real tight, all right? All right. That's a bet. All right. So once again, that is our special guest. For the evening, Coach Sam Pearson. Hope y'all really enjoyed the show. It's definitely been uh been fun. Shouts out to uh to Bunny. She couldn't be on the night because she is in New York holding things down. Shouts out to Joe. Shouts out to T Bone, Joe Stringer for joining us. Normally it's on ladies' night, but she hopped on this evening. And shouts out to you as well. Once again, this is your Wednesday night sports delight, the platform sports talk show. I am your boy Smooth. It's been a pleasure. Look forward to seeing y'all again next week. Another special guest. Another one will be holding things down. Don't forget, man, just give us a follow everywhere on social media. You see it right now on your screen. Give us a follow on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram on youtube subscribe click on that bell we're also on roku as well hot 365 radio you can download the app right now once again every first minute of the month ladies night every last minute of the month is the man cave i'm your boy smooth platform sports talk show and we are